this afternoon at Bryant Denny. Ben Obamanu and Roderick Hood back deep to receive the kickoff. Alabama won the toss and deferred to the second half. So the Tigers will have the ball first here today. Brian Bostic to kick it off for the Crimson Tide. And the 67th Iron Bowl is underway. Hood bobbles it at the three. Will be ridden down shy of the 20 yard line. Charles Jones on the special teams tackle for the Crimson Tide and Auburn will start backed up inside their own 20. Roderick Hood had one of the best return games for Auburn a week ago, both kickoff and punt return, but Auburn opens up in a bit of a hole starting with the, the ball at the 16 and a half yard line. And we'll see what this Auburn offense can do. And uh, we'll check out and see who Auburn has in the backfield right now. And it's Trey Smith who gets the start at tailback, the true freshman out of Florida. Single setback, Jason Campbell, the quarterback, under center. First snap of the game, play action for Campbell. Wants to go deep, goes underneath, and it's almost intercepted. Wayne Bacon cutting, cutting in front of the receiver and very nearly picked that ball off through to Marcel Willis on the play and actually threw into double coverage. He had Devin Aromashidu over the middle in single coverage, instead tried to come to the near sideline for Willis, who wasn't open, and it's second down for Auburn. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far, and Smith remains the lone setback. Campbell trying to check off at the line. Play clock at three. Just able to get the play away. Smith over the right side. Finds some daylight out across the 25, the 26-yard line before Ahmad Childress gets him to the ground. But a good pickup for Trey Smith, the 5'10", 190-pound freshman out of Venice, Florida. Trey Smith was a Class 6A Player of the Year in Florida a year ago. He rushed for over 1,700 yards in his senior season. Outstanding freshman for Auburn. And now we see Cooper Wallace, a converted tight end, line up at fullback. On third and short, and play action once again for Campbell. He's going deep, got his man, it is caught in the Bama territory, brought down at the tied 28-yard line. Anthony Mix on the receiving end, Auburn. A little play action on third and one. And Mix able to get behind Gerald Dixon into the secondary. Auburn got single coverage on the third down, and Alabama bit on the play action fake. Jason Campbell, a fine throw to Anthony Mix, who has played both tight end and wide receiver for Auburn this season. First down for the Tigers. Campbell now in the shotgun. Has time. Goes into the end zone, it is incomplete. Looking for Marcel Willis. Gerald Dixon on the coverage for the Crimson Tide, and not an easy play for either the receiver or the defensive back, turning around in that corner of the end zone, staring right into the sun. Jason Campbell had an opportunity to run the ball, and I think thought about it for a moment, and then saw Willis get the single coverage, but Dixon closed the gap on the incomplete pass. Back to the eye formation for the Tigers on second and 10. They'll pitch it to Smith. Finds a little daylight, ball comes loose. And indeed, that appeared to be a fumble, but the Tigers fall on it after a short pickup. Brooks Daniels on the stop for the Crimson Tide. Monrico Crittenden falling on the loose ball. Pickup of about a yard, a yard and a half. Sets up a third and long now for the Tigers. Auburn, one of the better teams in the country on third down. Tigers lead the SEC 46% on third down this season. Shotgun for Campbell on third and eight. Tide crowds the line of scrimmage. Campbell pressured and sacked. Flag is down as Kendall Moorhead 
Came B rushing through with lots of company as well as Campbell sacked back out at the 42-yard line, but check the marker. Likely to be a hold against Auburn. Well, Alabama didn't mask anything, did they? They had seven in the box, and they brought all seven, dropping four back into coverage, and Auburn just simply couldn't handle the rush for Alabama there. Holding on Auburn, declined by Alabama. It's fourth and very long now, 24. And punting time for the Tigers. Now what was once a promising drive for Auburn after the long pass on third down to Anthony Mix, Auburn went backwards, gained only one yard after that, and Damon Duvall will be out to punt it away. Try and pin Alabama deep. Shawd Williams stands at his own 10-yard line. 10 -yard line. Duvall. Hangs it up high. Williams gets away from it, and that one will carry a few yards into the end zone. So the tied defense gives up a big play, but no points. And now the Alabama offense will have its shot. 12-16 to play in the first quarter. Timeout on the field. Alabama's first possession when we come back. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the new Chicago Dish Pizza from Pizza Hut. The deepest pizza ever to hit your table. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, finished before your eyes right at your table with chunky marinara sauce and topped off with freshly grated cheese. So deep, you need a fork to eat it. The Chicago Dish Pizza, new at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. They're grilling again. We're going over. They just had us over last week. Oh, yeah. I can almost taste it. But my hair. Don't worry, honey. They love us. Hold it. We've hit the mother load. 12 ounces of delicious T-bone. Shoney's is serving up family favorites at a price you'll love. Classics like our original half a pound and grilled chicken entrees or our 12-ounce T-bone steak. And try one of three tasty toppings for just 99 cents more. Shoney's, we can't wait to have you over. Alabama starts its first possession at its own 20-yard line. McLean in front of Beard in the I formation. Tyler Watts at quarterback will give it to Santonio Beard. Trying to break it outside. Keeps his feet out near the 30-yard line. Tavares Robinson on the stop for Auburn. A Santonio Beard. Auburn fans still have him in their dreams. The 20 carries for 199 yards and a pair of touchdowns at Jordan Hare a year ago. He got seven yards on first down when it looked like Auburn had him hemmed in. 18 carries, 109 yards, two touchdowns last week, and Alabama shutout win in Baton Rouge. Second and three for the Tide. Clint Johnston, the motion man, and an option look for Watts. He'll keep it himself because he had no one to pitch to. Has the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. They'll spot him down out at the 32. Watts, senior out of Pelham High School. All of the seniors are honorary captains for this. Permanent captains will be announced next week by head coach Choney. Well, a year ago, Auburn prepared for the option and got Beard and Andrew Zow instead. They've prepared for the option this week, but Alabama's been able to run it with consistency all season long as Tyler Watts gets the first down. McLean and Williams back in the backfield now. Option to the other side. Shaw Williams takes the pitch and really gets popped as he nears the 40-yard line. Traveris Robinson laid the lumber to him, but a good gain on Alabama for first down. And, Andy, that's something the Auburn defense can't afford is giving up big yardage on first down. Now, if Traveris Robinson's making a lot of tackles for Auburn this afternoon, the Tigers are in some trouble as he came up from his free safety spot. Shot Williams this season for Alabama really gives them that speed to the corner as he showed on that play a seven-yard gain. Williams last week. 16 carries, 131 yards in the win over LSU. Beard back in there now for Alabama, and Watts goes to the air for the first time. Completes it in front of the Alabama bench to Triandos Luke. And that will be good for the Alabama first down. Morris Willis bumps him out of bounds, but the tide will move the chains again. 
Horace Willis was the guy that Georgia picked on on its game-winning drive last week. A 41-yard pass got Georgia deep in territory, and then the touchdown pass that gave Georgia the win. One thing the Tide and Tigers can agree on. They love another shot at Georgia. You bet. <laughs> First down, Alabama, just shy of midfield. To the air again for Watts, and overthrows Clint Johnston. Got pressure that time up the middle, and Watts had to hurt his throw just a little bit. Brett Eddins applied some pressure to sophomore out of Montgomery. Brett Eddins' father, Liston, played for Auburn. He was a lineman. He also has a brother that plays basketball at Arkansas. And Brett Eddins has really come on strong for Auburn in this last third of the season. It got the start today at that defensive end spot. You look across the front, junior, 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 sophomore for Auburn on that defensive front, so you would think the future looks equally as bright for the Tigers. Second down and 10 for the Tide. Back to the ground, Sean Williams struggles for a couple of yards. He ducks across perhaps just into Auburn territory before he's brought down. Sets up a third and call it eight. Dontarius Thomas on the tackle. Junior out of Perry, Georgia. Auburn's middle three, the linebackers, Dontarius Thomas, Mark Brown, and Carlos Dansbury really the heart and soul of this defense. And for Auburn to be successful to, to run, Auburn has to have those making a majority of the tackles today. Shaw Williams alongside Watts in the shotgun. Third and a long seven. Rolls the pocket, completes it to Fulgham. Slips one tackle, has the first down, and more. Still on his feet around the 32-yard line. That's a heck of an effort by Dre Fulgham. Carlos Hansby had the first crack at him, and if he brings Fulgham down, he has him behind the, the first down carry. There's a couple flags down on the play, and we'll wait and see it. Dansby with the first crack. This is just a great run. He makes three guys miss, make that four before McNeil comes in to make the stop. But this one may be coming back. We'll see. A block in the back or a clip, perhaps. Steve Landis, our referee today, heading up the SEC crew. So after the play, a first down for the Crimson Tide, but then they'll back up 15 yards. Not exactly sure who drew that flag from the officials. And something that was touched on, I think, by both coaches this week, a 15-yard personal foul is a little unusual in this game. It's a bitter, intense rivalry, but for the most part, a very clean one out on the field. On first down, play action for Watts, swings it out to Clint Johnston. Lowers his shoulder and lumbers inside the 40-yard line, very close to another first down where Horace Willis trips him up. Right now, Alabama in its passing game is picking on those linebackers right there, running away from Carlos Dansby. A first down catch as Horace Willis had to come up and make the stop for Auburn. It is a first down at the Auburn 37. So an impressive drive starting for Alabama under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. McLean in front of Beard as Bama goes back to the I formation. Right up the gut, Santonio Beard. Not much running room to Ontarius Thomas, one of the white shirts there to bring him down after a pickup of about two yards. Beard on the year, averaging about 62 yards a game. Alabama does not have a running back averaging more than 65 yards a game on the ground, but it has been a, a real team effort with the three running backs, Williams, Beard, and now Hudson, who checks into the game for the Tide. Pump fake for Watts, and now he goes deep, looking for Luke and just overthrown. He had gotten a step on the defender. Went after Carlos Rogers on the play with the pump fake. Rogers did a pretty good job to jam right on the pump fake there. 
and uh, Watts overthrew his man going down that near side with Triando, Triandos Luke heading to the end zone. So that'll set up the third and call it eight now for Alabama. The Tide needs to take it to the Auburn 27 to keep this drive going. Sean Williams checks back into the game in the backfield as Watts works from the shotgun. Auburn shows blitz. Here they come. Watts steps up but can't get away. Dropped back at the initial line of scrimmage by Dontarius Thomas, I believe. We got the good push. Auburn brought pressure and got to Tyler Watts. Auburn showed the blitz and brought the blitz. Dontarius Thomas coming around the right end for Auburn. Got a handful of Tyler Watts jersey and was able to take him down. 24th sack of the year recorded by the Auburn defense. Alabama leads the SEC in sacks with 36 on the year. Fourth down, kind of no man's land for the offense. So Dennis Franchoni's going to go for it. Bama spreads the field. Auburn comes with pressure again. Unloads complete to Williams. He's going to have to do it on his own, and he can't. Auburn hems him in, runs him out of bounds. Shy of the first down marker, Junior Rosegreen, I believe the man that bumped him out of bounds. And the Auburn defense gives some ground, but comes up with a stop as well on Alabama's first offensive possession. Auburn did a good job on the fourth down there. Shad Williams coming out of the backfield, and the Tigers did a good job of containment along the sideline. And Auburn gets the ball after Alabama's initial drive. So each team a possession. Both fail to score. Timeout, 7.24 to go in the first quarter. Back to Bryant-Denny Stadium after this. What is the most influential time in a child's life? Age 6, 8, 12. Actually, it's between 3 and 8 every afternoon. That's the time a kid is most likely to get into trouble. Or worse. Which is exactly why that's the time the boys and girls clubs open their doors and their arms to kids all over the country every day. When kids walk into these clubs, they're surrounded by people who care what happens to them. Adults who make sure these children continue to learn and grow long after the school bell rings. But there are still thousands more kids who need our help. Thousands of kids who need help to prepare for a positive future. Please help keep these doors open. Support the Boys and Girls Club. The positive place for kids. Midway through the first quarter, Auburn takes over after stopping Alabama on fourth down. The Tigers have it at their own 33-yard line. Campbell deals it away to Smith over the right side. The shifty back finds a big hole. Tripped up, brought down from behind at the Alabama 15-yard line. But Trey Smith stepping in for the injured Ronnie Brown, and he's come through big early on. Well, that's what he gives Auburn other than Brown. He's got a very quick first step, and I thought, actually, he was down at the line of scrimmage. He does a good job of keeping his balance and then showed some pretty good breakaway speed being hauled down at the 11-yard line. Or, excuse me, the 16th. He stays in there after the big gainer. Auburn in the red zone. Second big play of the game for the Auburn offense. They couldn't capitalize on the first one. Give it to Smith. Cuts it back. And not much there that time. A yard, and that's about it before he's stacked up at the 15. Smith got the start against Louisiana Monroe. Nine carries, 65 yards, and a touchdown. So... I guess on the bright side for Auburn, he's not exactly being thrown to the wolves. He's had some quality playing time the last few weeks anyway. Now, there's some talk at the beginning of the year that they would be able to redshirt him. Mm. Thankfully for Auburn right now, they've not done that. And he's available and is Auburn's starting tailback right now. Second down and nine for the Tigers. Campbell. Underneath, completes to his tight end, Robert Johnson, to the end zone, touchdown! One of the favorite targets the last few games, Robert Johnson finds the end zone and gives Auburn the early lead. David, you're right, as a matter of fact, he was Auburn's favorite target last week against Georgia. 
two big keys on the play. Campbell given all day to throw, and then Johnson with the good catch, and then a great move at the five-yard line to the sideline and into the end zone. Damon Duvall for the extra point. He's perfect in his career, 122 in a row. Justin Fetzko, the holder for the Tigers. Bobbles the snap, but gets it down. And Duvall bangs it through and gives Auburn the early 7-0 lead. 5.59 to go in the first quarter. Another look at the touchdown. A nice move by Johnson. And he puts the Tigers on top. She's the symbol of enduring freedom. She's been the symbol of our company for 50 years. Today, she means more to all of us than ever before. We think you'd be proud to have Miss Liberty for your own. That's why Liberty National Life is offering this lapel pin to everyone, free in the spirit of Miss Liberty. Simply call and she'll be delivered to you, free. You ordered the Chicago Dish, our new deep dish pizza? Now, I warn you, this baby is so deep, you need a fork. Sounds good. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the Chicago Dish Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, and topped off with chunky marinara sauce. The new Chicago Dish. So deep, you'll need a fork, maybe even a knife. Whoa. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Well, for the first time since the Georgia game on October 5th, Alabama trails in a football game. 7-0 Auburn on the impressive drive. The big key for Auburn was the long run by Trey Smith, getting Auburn deep in the territory. And then on a second down, Jason Campbell finding Robert Johnson for his second touchdown catch of the year. Duvall to boot it away. Luke from the one. Finds a little daylight, but that closes quickly. Out across the 20, the 22-yard line, Derek Graves on the tackle for Auburn. So the Tide, 7-0. Derek Graves, over. an interesting story. He's from nearby Holt, Alabama. Outstanding tailback coming out of high school, forced to sit out of here after trouble with the NCAA and their academic requirements and converted to a linebacker and has done a very good job at linebacker and on special teams this year. McLean in front of Beard in the eye. And Santonio Beard gets the call. Keeps the legs driving and moves the pile up near the 25-yard line, a pickup of maybe two yards. Beard with 11 rushing touchdowns, far and away the leader on this Alabama team, but balance is the key. Saw it on the first drive, able to mix the run in the pass before Auburn's defense stiffened on its side of the field. Watts with time, completes that to the far side. Zach Fletcher on the grab for Alabama, Roderick Hood. Spins him to the ground, but not before the Tide picks up a first down. It's a nice timing route by Fletcher, the 6'3 junior from Moulton, Alabama. Just down and out. Tyler Watts had the ball in the air before the cut was made, but there is a flag on the play. A personal foul on Auburn. First down either way. Did not see that either. Alabama flag for a 15-yarder on its first drive. Well, that's something Auburn can't afford it to do this afternoon. Auburn comes in as a double-digit underdog, and the Tigers simply can't make those kind of mistakes. It was going to be a first down, but add 15 yards on the end of it. Now Alabama in Auburn territory for the second straight drive. Spotted at the Auburn 47. Both teams have had their problems with penalties this year. Watts back under center on first and 10. Option look and he'll pitch it to Williams. Gets a good block on the outside and takes it inside the 35 yard line. 
Sam Collins, a nice block on the corner, I believe, to yep. help Spring Williams. Collins comes in motion back towards the play. Sean Williams runs right through the tackle of Brett Eddins on the play. That was just a great burst of speed. Good downfield blocking by the Alabama wide receivers and a first down carry to the Auburn 34. Williams stays in there, dotting the eye. Straight ahead handoff this time as flags come in about the time he took the handoff. Takes it to the 30, but this one will likely come back. Reggie Torbor on the stop. Pretty good surge by the front three for Alabama, but a hold in there apparently is going to bring this one back. Alabama flagged nine times a ball game for about 74 yards. Auburn over eight penalties a game, but just 56 yards. Auburn prefers the fault starts and offsides apparently That's a little right. more than Alabama. The five yarders. <laughs> well, they were plagued with those kind of penalties in the Florida loss in overtime. Oh, a ton. Move it back to the 44-yard line now. It's first and 20 for the Tide. A little razzle-dazzle. Thurman Ward wants to throw. Now he'll run it and step out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Auburn fans and Ooh. Tommy Tuberville wanted a hold in the Alabama backfield, but no flag on the ground. Well, Brett Eddins was the one that got the pressure here down at the bottom of the screen. Let's look here. And they're looking for the hold on that play. And may have a little bit of a, a gripe on it as well. But pretty good coverage by Auburn, not only to come up and contain the play, but also defending the pass on the play as well. Auburn looked for a couple of those holes last week and didn't get them against Georgia either. We'll discuss the Bulldogs later. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 21 now. That play lost a yard for the Tide. Back to the option, Watts will keep and nowhere to go. He is ridden down to the ground hard by Reggie Torbor. And the Auburn defense again stiffening after Alabama crosses midfield. Well, we saw Alabama run that play to the near side. They run it to the far side. The wide receiver comes in motion. But while Reggie Torbor, watch him fight off the block of number 78, Justin Smiley. He just completely rides Smiley into the backfield and then goes from Smiley to Tyler Watts on the sack. Loss back to midfield. Tide needs the 24-yard line for a first down. Third and 26. Tigers show blitz. And here they come. Flags and whistles as they blow the play dead. May have taken too much time. So another five yard step off on Alabama. I guess there's not a whole lot of difference in third and 26 and third and 31. What's five yards when you need 26? A bomb is a bomb. See what Dennis Franchoni and the Alabama offense can come up with on third and 31. Tigers back off this time. Now they crowd the line. Good protection. Guns it down the middle and dropped. Fulgham had it in his hands for a moment, but could not reel it in. Junior Rose Green on the coverage, and Alabama will have to punt. Junior Rose Green has done a nice job for Auburn. He's a, a Miami defender. Wanted Auburn to play more of a Miami-style defense this year and play physical. On third and long, he's able to break up the pass. Roderick Hood, the deep man for Auburn, is Lane Bearden set to punt it away for Alabama. Still averaging better than 41 yards a kick. That's remarkable. Over 38 yards since tearing up his knee. You can only imagine what it feels like on a day like this. Good snap, no pressure, and a pretty good kick. Hood from the 14, right up the gut. Lane Bearden, the last man there, and he makes the tackle. At midfield, the one-legged punter <laughs> makes the stop 
for the Crimson Tide. Uh, Lane Bearden was the last line of defense between Roderick Hood and the goal line for Auburn. A 36-yard return for Hood to midfield. You'll take a look. Watch Bearden just step up and take Beard or take Hood off his feet. It's a heck of a tackle by Bearden, but Auburn with very good field position to open up. Just shy of midfield with 2.39 to go in the first quarter, and the Tigers already leading 7 to nothing. Campbell all by himself in the backfield as the Tigers spread it out on first down. Five on the play clock, and Bama comes with pressure late. Pass caught by Jarris McIntyre. Steps out of bounds at the Alabama 45-yard line. Wayne Bacon there to bump him out. Uh, Auburn gets five yards and just goes underneath with five out there, five receivers out there. They throw the underneath route to Jarris McIntyre for five yards. Looks like some confusion in the Auburn huddle, trying to get the play in from the sidelines. And the Tigers will have to spend the time out. The players in the huddle wanted somebody else out there, and the coaches didn't want to send anybody out there. So they'll talk it over. First time out called by the Tigers. 2.34 to go in the first quarter. 7-0. Auburn with the lead. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSS. Tune in as the balls head to Nashville to play the Commodores. Three air starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, only on CSS. Your source for sports in the Southeast. Wednesday night is South Carolina night on CSS. Tune in as the Gamecocks visit Clemson to battle for the interstate dragon rights. Action starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Second down for the Tigers. Draw play to Smith, the big hole. And takes it down to the Alabama 33-yard line before Freddie Roach can get into the ground. Smith, not the biggest guy in the world, but very quick and very shifty in the backfield. Trey Smith, Auburn's starting tailback this afternoon at 5'10", 190, does a good job of kind of getting lost at the line of scrimmage. He gets 12 yards on the draw play down to the Alabama 33. Cooper Wallace, the fullback for the Tigers in front of Smith. The draw again, pops it outside where nothing in the middle available and picks up a couple of yards on the play. More heady running by Trey Smith. Roach and Daniels combined to tackle him that time. Good surge from the defensive front for Alabama and Trey Smith just does a good job of keeping his balance and getting any kind of positive yards for Auburn, he gets three yards at second down and seven. Spotted at the 30. Where it's second down for the Tigers, and again, spreading the field. Five wide receivers for Campbell. Pressured, completes it underneath. Obamadu on the grab. Ridden down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line and an Auburn first down. Charlie Pepper on the stop for the Crimson Tide, but another big gainer for the Tigers. Protection long enough for Campbell to unload that one. Auburn's done a good job of late protecting its quarterback, and Jason Campbell is part of that. He stepped up into the pocket with that five-wide set and again just found the drag route, that freshman wide receiver from Selma, Obamanu down for a first down to the 14. Straight ahead, Smith just lowers his head and gets what he can, a yard or two, before he's swarmed under by a bunch of crimson jerseys. But you look up, doesn't look like much, and he gains two yards for you. 
just spun off the initial hit and then put both hands on the ball, trying, making sure that he wasn't going to fumble deep in territory. That's been a big key for Auburn in the wins, the turnover margin heavily in their favor in their wins, and as you might expect, not so in the losses this year. Bama shows blitz. Unloads, wide open, touchdown, Robert Johnson again. And Auburn burns Bama on the blitz. That's exactly what happened. Jason Campbell read the blitz. Alabama showed it a little bit early. And Robert Johnson was open by 20 yards in every direction in the end zone. Alabama's only hope was that the goal line would trip him before he made the catch. Duvall again for the extra point. Right down the middle for Duvall, the senior out of Chattanooga. And with 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Tigers have raced out to a 14-0 lead over the Crimson Tide. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply, cause you're the X and I'm the Y. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? So, have you ever been backstage before? Okay, guys, it's an advocate. It's an old school calculator. One, two, three, four. Like the circle and the square, our geometry is a perfect pair. Now, why should kids know about gravity? Well, gravity holds them down. I once was one, but now we're two. Uh, I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> Um, 14-0. Final 15 seconds of the first quarter. Duvall to kick it away for the Tigers. Ray Hudson, Triando Sloop, the twin deep men for the Crimson Tide. Duvall hits that one high and about five yards deep. Fumbled. And Luke will just take a knee. Had serious thoughts of running that one out. But after the bobble, had no choice but to take an E. And Bama gets it at the 20 with six seconds to go in the first quarter. Damon Duvall, a weapon for Auburn on kickoffs, as he's able to boom it deep most of the time and kicking into a pretty good wind here in this first quarter of play. So Campbell with two touchdown passes in the ball game already, giving him 11 on the year, and we'll see if the Alabama offense can sustain a drive. Here's Santonio Beard right up the gut. Seven, eight, maybe nine yards on first down, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Auburn banged up, beaten up, but has outplayed Alabama in the first 15 minutes, and the Tigers own a 14-0 lead after one. Be sure to watch The Lighter Side of Sports, hosted by NFL star Mike Golick. Join us as we take an inside look at some of the funniest moments in sports. You'll see plenty of superstars, bloopers, and amazing achievements. The Lighter Side of Sports, available only on CSS. Watch the Lou Holtz Show on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Central to review the highlights from each week's game on CSS. Hey, I'm Lou Holtz, inviting you to watch my show each and every week on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Second quarter from Bryant Denny Stadium. David Crane, Andy Bertram with you. It's the Tide and the Tigers. Auburn leads it 14 to nothing. Alabama 
looks at a second and a long one as the second quarter begins Watts will keep it himself pick up the first down as he spun down out across the 35 yard line by Roderick Hood and others Alabama has had impressive drives going on its first two touches but unable to finish one thus far and an Auburn man down in the far sideline I think it's junior Rose Green Auburn strong safety out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale Florida big game last week for him seven tackles and a sack against Georgia and it appears that Auburn's team doctor Mike Goodlett is out there with honors also Arnold Gambor who's Auburn's team trainer and they're looking at the left leg the lower left leg and something that as you and I talked about Andy and just about everybody else too much of this in the Southeastern Conference this year there have been just an inordinate number of injuries Ooh. looks like DeMarco McNeil who was coming out to help out on the play may have fallen on Rose Green's leg good news is he's up and walking off on his own power Junior's one of the more animated defenders for Auburn good to see him jog off the yeah. field DeMarco McNeil falls on your left leg you may be slow to get up too DeMarco McNeil falls on me I may never be seen again <laughs> may be an imprint in the turf <laughs> exactly first down Alabama Watts into the shotgun Johnston the motion man and the delay give to Santonio Beard with nowhere to go he loses about three yards on the plate Ontarius Thomas kind of led the charge but a lot more white jerseys than Santonio Beard wanted to see that's a play that Auburn has been susceptible to in the Alabama game a year ago and the Arkansas game this year two games where Auburn was really dominated by the opposing offense and it's something they've worked on a great deal and paid off on the two yard loss there back at the 35 yard line now on second down option and Watts will keep it this time ridden down as he crosses the 40 yard line maybe the 42 Rochard Gilliard junior out of Jacksonville with the stop Ontarius Thomas the outside linebacker for Auburn came up and, and committed to the pitch man Tyler Watts turned it upfield and got six yards on the play to bring up third down and six tide has gotten better as the year has gone along 40 percent converting third downs coming into this ball game Johnston slides into motion again Watts delivers that one and incomplete heck of a play by Roderick Hood breaking on that ball and knocking it away throwing from the left hash mark to the far sideline that ball was just in the air too long and Roderick Hood got a good break on the ball and knocked it down if it's in the air much longer we may see Roderick Hood taking it to the end zone Lane Beard to punt again for the Tide as Roderick Hood after making the play drops back to the 20. He set up Auburn's last touchdown drive with the 36 yard return to midfield. No pressure again low line drive kick this time that Hood takes in at the 16 makes a few moves and may wind up picking up a yard or so the o sanders getting downfield to make the special teams tackle for alabama so the tigers backed up to start this drive but leading 14 to nothing early in the second quarter she's the symbol of enduring freedom she's been the symbol of our company for 50 years today she means more to all of us than ever before we think you'd be proud to have Miss Liberty for your own. That's why Liberty National Life is offering this lapel pin to everyone, free in the spirit of Miss Liberty. Simply call and she'll be delivered to you, free. Pizza. There are 
big dogs here. Bobby, is that you? I'm having second thoughts about this whole NFL XL deal. The big New Yorker and a free two liter of Pepsi. All season long on Sundays and Mondays. It's gonna be the greatest deal around. Not from where I'm sitting. Try the NFL XL deal from Pizza Hut and Pepsi. An extra large pizza at an extra small price and a free two liter Pepsi. Only available this season on Sundays and Mondays, so call today. Only at Pizza Hut. You make the call. Come on in and watch the game. We'll deliver the deal. They're grilling again. We're going over. They just had us over last week. Oh, yeah. I can almost taste it. But my hair. Don't worry, honey. They love us. Hold it. We fit the mother load. 12 ounces of delicious T-bone. Shoney's is serving up family favorites at a price you'll love. Classics like our original half a pound and grilled chicken entrees or our 12 ounce T-bone steak. And try one of three tasty toppings for just 99 cents more. Shoney's, we can't wait to have you over. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the new Chicago Dish Pizza from Pizza Hut. The deepest pizza ever to hit your table. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, finished before your eyes right at your table with chunky marinara sauce and topped off with freshly grated cheese. So deep, you'll need a fork to eat it. The Chicago Dish Pizza, new at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Tigers start this drive at their own 17-yard line. Smith and Wallace flanking Jason Campbell in the Auburn backfield. Good protection again for Campbell. Wide open on the far side and a catch made. First down for the Tigers out to the 35-yard line. Marcel Willis on the grab. Good protection again by that Auburn offensive line. Yeah, and among those making the good protection that time was Trey Smith picking up a blitz from the outside, giving Campbell a chance to step up into the pocket and find Marcel Willis for out to the 35-yard line and an Auburn first down. Back to the ground game and Trey Smith. First down run out to the 39-yard line. Naughton McKay, Lozier, Brooks, Daniels in on the tackle for Alabama. Auburn gets four yards behind the middle three of their offensive front. Ben Nallon, the senior center, the junior guard, Monrico Crittenden, and a sophomore guard, Danny Lindsay. Just great movement off the bottom line of scrimmage for four yards up the middle. Willis split wide to the near side for Auburn. Campbell drops to throw. Again, underneath, Arama Shadu on the catch. Spun down very close to the first down marker by Herschel Bolden. All depends on the spot, but very close to another first down. They'll bring on the chains all the way across the field to measure. No, they won't. It's a first down for Auburn. While Auburn has looked deep a couple times today, for the most part, the Tigers have gone on the underneath route. And that time finding Devin Aroma should do on the drag route across the middle. Again, Jason Campbell given time to throw on a first down for Auburn to the 45. Trey Smith, the single setback for the Tigers. Bama crowds the line again defensively. Pressure comes, Campbell unloads, complete. Johnson to tight end once more. And Bama able to bring him to the ground finally. Charles Jones wrapped him up at the 45-yard line. Looks like he may be about a half a yard shy of the first down, but nine yards sets up second and short. Pretty good job for Auburn on the front. They had a double tight end set, but both tight ends went out to receive, and still Campbell had enough time then to find Robert Johnson, who's been the favorite receiver here this afternoon so far for Auburn. Tigers on second and short, nothing fancy. Just pick up the first down with Trey Smith. Carrying for a yard, maybe two. Derek Pope credited with the tackle for Alabama. But it's first down, Auburn. The Tigers on the move again. The Tide, 43. We talked about Alabama's balance early on offensively. Auburn's done a good job as well, mixing in the run with Trey Smith primarily, and then the intermediate and deep routes with Jason Campbell, and he's had a terrific first half.
Campbell from the shotgun in trouble, running for his life, and finally brought down by the Alabama defense. That will be a sack back to the 45-yard line, but he was bouncing around like a pinball back there trying to elude all the crimson jerseys. Alabama brought the house on the play, and Auburn's fortunate that it wasn't a 9 or 10-yard loss instead of a 2-yard loss by Jason Campbell. Pretty good effort getting near the line of scrimmage. Second down and 11 now for the Tigers. Once again, they empty the backfield. Five wideouts. Campbell flushed. Now we'll run it. Tripped up finally at the Alabama 25-yard line. Pressure again by the Alabama defense, and Campbell once more steps up, avoids it, and turns in a big play. That's one aspect that Jason Campbell brings to the Auburn quarterback position that Daniel Cobb doesn't necessarily have. Campbell makes that play all on his own. Watch him step through the pocket here, getting to the outside, and then with the pump fake, freezes the linebackers, and then watch the speed to the far side and good downfield blocking by Devin Aroma should do. All the way to the Alabama 25. Give it to Smith. Tries to pop it outside. Can't do it. Picks up a yard. That's it. Brooks Daniels brings him down. Daniels, again, leading Alabama in tackles. 94 stops on the year coming into the game. And an injured Alabama player, Ahmad Childress, I believe, still down on the ground. Tide got a scare last week in Baton Rouge when Kenny King got knocked a little silly for a play, and they brought out the stretcher and carted him off the field, but he gave a thumbs up on his way off, which was a good sign for everybody. Alabama defensive line has been fortunate this year to avoid the injuries and is also fortunate to have some quality depth there as well. Perhaps as fine a defensive front as you're going to find not only in the Southeastern Conference, but in the country, and tons of experience. When you add up the number of games that guys like Jarrett Johnson and Kenny King and Kendall Moorhead have started, it's amazing. Guys, I know that Auburn fans feel have been at Alabama for about eight years <laughs> at this point. I still claim Freddie Wagan played longer than any college player in history. <laughs> Second down for the Tigers. Alabama defense in desperate need of a big play. Campbell again all day to throw. The pass tipped and almost intercepted. Robert Johnson open again, juggled it a little bit, and he almost juggled it right to Freddie Roach of Alabama. When you take a look at the size of Robert Johnson, he's 6'6", 270 with speed. I mean, he's got NFL potential written all over him, but from time to time, he'll drop a ball like this one. He's wide open again, right in the middle of the field. The throw's right there. If he catches it, it turns around at six, and it almost turns into an interception. Third down for Auburn. They need the Alabama 15. Here comes the blitz and some miscommunication. Yeah, he was looking for Robert Johnson to break it to the end zone on that play. That's supposed to be a post route, I believe, by Johnson. At least the, that's the reaction of Jason Campbell on the throw. It was a blitz coming, and somebody didn't read that blitz. And now Al Auburn will go out and try something that has become a real adventure in the last third of the season, and who would have thought it at the beginning of the year? Field goal kicking by Damon Duvall. Just five out of 12 this season. He will try a 40-yarder. Out of the hold of Justin Fetzko. Plenty of leg. And this one is right on the money. Officially a 41-yard field goal 
for Damon Duvall. And the Tigers tack on three more and make it a 17 to nothing lead with 7.52 to go before the half. CSS is your source for college basketball, bringing you more than 200 live games from around the region. Tuesday night watches Georgia State visit Auburn to take on the Tigers at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. And stay tuned as Virginia plays Liberty. Don't miss college basketball on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. 11 plays, 59 yards, 5 minutes, 11 seconds off the clock. Damon Duvall, a 41-yard field goal, the scoring drive for Auburn to make it 17 to nothing. Kickoff by Duvall. Five yards deep, and Triandos Luke will take a knee. Tyler Watts set to lead the offense out. Once again, Alabama has moved it fairly well, but again, nothing to show for it. The Auburn defense playing so well the last couple of weeks. Tigers really outplayed Georgia for most of that game last week, but came up a little short. Straight ahead running for Santonio Beard. Lowers his shoulder, crosses the 30-yard line. Traveris Robinson on the tackle, but that's a first down run for Santonio Beard on first down. Nothing fancy. Alabama just taking it right behind All-SEC center Alonzo Ephraim. And I mean, if Traveris Robinson doesn't make the stop, Santonio may be taking it to the end zone. Beard checks out in favor of Shawn Williams. Option for Watts, who can't shed a tackler. Takes it out to the 33-yard line. Reggie Torbor again had a grab of the jersey and would not let Tyler Watts go. It's a pretty good play by Reggie Torbor as he fought off the tackle there to get to the quarterback, Tyler Watts. And again, we saw Dontarius Thomas, number 54, the linebacker, come up. And looks like his job all day long is to take the back. He's, the, he's taking the pitch guy. It's up to the defensive end to come up and hammer the quarterback. Pick up of about three yards on first down for Watts. Play action. Good protection. Swings it out to the far side, and Johnston slipped down. That ball may have been overthrown a little bit anyway, but Johnston had his feet go out from under him, and it's third down. And Johnston was open, I think, when Tyler took a look at him. As coming off the initial line of scrimmage, Dontarius Thomas picked up Johnston and then handed off to Horace Willis. If that pass is delivered correctly, though, it may be a first down for Alabama. Third and seven for the Tide. McLean checks back in at the fullback spot. Throws on the run, overthrown, and incomplete. Tipped by Horace Willis as Watts was looking for Sam Collins, but overthrew him just a shade, and the Tide will have to punt again. He had Collins open on the sideline route. That's just a simple overthrow by Tyler Watts. Clock stop with six minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half, and Auburn anxious to get the ball back. They've got the offense in gear. Bearden to punt to Roderick Hood. See if Auburn goes after Bearden on this one. No pressure, tumbling kick. Hood sprints up to make the catch at the 33. 
Got some blocking and takes it up to midfield. Moore, good starting position for the Auburn offense. And plenty of time to work. 6.02 with the clock stopped. And this drive will start by the nose of the football in Alabama territory. 17-0. Tigers with the lead over the Crimson Tide. Back to Brian Denny Stadium after this. What is the most influential time in a child's life? Eight, six, eight, 12. Actually, it's between three and eight every afternoon. That's the time a kid is most likely to get into trouble. Or worse. Which is exactly why that's the time the Boys and Girls Clubs open their doors and their arms to kids all over the country every day. When kids walk into these clubs, they're surrounded by people who care what happens to them. Adults who make sure these children continue to learn and grow long after the school bell rings. But there are still thousands more kids who need our help. Thousands of kids who need help to prepare for a positive future. Please help keep these doors open. Support the Boys and Girls Clubs. The positive place for kids. Hey, do yourself a tremendous favor. Ask yourself. Are you happy with your job? Are you getting anywhere? Are you making a difference in people's lives, making the money you deserve? With one phone call, you could compare what you have and what you could have, right now and in the future. With a career in sales with Liberty National Life, one of the most successful companies in America. Call us for a confidential interview that could change your life. Maybe the most important phone call you'll ever make. The short punt by Lane Beard and a nice return by Roderick Hood sets Auburn up on the Alabama side of the 50-yard line. Already on top, 17 to nothing with six minutes to go in the second quarter. Play action, Campbell in trouble and sack. Flags come in as Campbell just tried to fling that one away, and he fired a pass to an assistant coach on the sidelines, but that'll be grounding. Yeah, that'll be intentional grounding. Didn't get outside the tackle before he threw the football and should have just should have just eaten that one. Alabama blitzed and brought a guy off the corner, and uh, Jason Campbell rolling back and then towards that side had no chance as Naughton McKay Losher came up to make the sack. It'll be second down from where Campbell unloaded the ball, which is his own 43-yard line. Naughton McKay Losher recording the sack for the Tide. Sets up a second and long. Tide threatening to blitz again. Give to Smith. Shifting and close to getting back to midfield. Wayne Bacon on the stop for Alabama. Gets about six yards on the draw for Auburn. Brings up third down and 11. And Auburn has been pretty good on third down here as it has been throughout the season. You wonder, those of us that haven't seen Trey Smith, is he durable enough? Can he be the number one guy for an entire ball game? We're gonna find I out. We'll find <laughs> out. Auburn has no other choice. It's five wide receivers on third and 11. Campbell, time again, hit as he throws. The catch is made for a first down. In traffic, Marcel Willis makes that grab and moves the chains for the Tigers. What a throw and catch. With five receivers in, Alabama decides to, to rush three. Still put pretty good pressure on Campbell, who stepped up. He waits until the last second and delivers a ball in traffic and right between the eight and the zero of Marcel Willis. Charles Jones on the tackle, but not before a pickup of 12 yards and a first down. Give it to Smith. Tries a little misdirection and nothing doing. Brought down right at the line of scrimmage by Jared Johnson for Alabama. Down to four and a half minutes to go. Auburn 
done a nice job of hanging on to the football here in the first half. Yeah, at the very least, Auburn would like to take as much time off the clock on this drive and then punch it in somehow. Second down and 10. Blitz comes again, sacked again. Derek Pope busting through to drop Campbell for a big loss. All the way back to the Auburn 48 yard line. 13 yards on the loss as Alabama rushed six and Auburn just didn't have the numbers and Pope I think was untouched until he got to Campbell. And third and long now for Auburn. Third and 23, they say, for the Tigers. Three and a half minutes to go before intermission, and they'll just run the draw with Smith, able to keep those feet going back into Alabama territory at the 46-yard line. Derek Pope, Herschel Bolden combine on the stop for Alabama, and punting time for the second time today for Auburn and Damon Duvall. Robert on the initial drive had a chance to pin Alabama deep and was unable to do so as the punt sailed into the end zone. This time the ball will be snapped from the Alabama 45 as Duvall tries to pin the Crimson Tide deep. Not as good a kick this time for Duvall. Williams out across the 25. Nice return for Sean Williams to the 27-yard line. That's where Alabama will set up shot with 2.36 to go before halftime. And all three timeouts remaining. We'll see what Dennis Franchoni and the Alabama offense can come up with. They love to get some points before the break. 17-0 Tigers back to Tuscaloosa in just a moment. Every race I win, I have my team to thank. Now we can offer a similar team to a special group of children. Victims of child abuse who desperately need to win back their lives. Children's Advocacy Centers unite social workers, law enforcement, doctors, and therapists. Every resource under one roof. Make it happen in your community. Call today and help abused children get their lives back on track. Sunday is Alabama Day on CSS. Tune in to watch as the Crimson Tide rolls in on Honolulu Shores to play Hawaii. The year starts at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Tide takes over at its own 27. Brody Coyle in at quarterback for Alabama. Trying to get a spark before halftime. He'll hand it off to Sean Williams. That's not a bad spark as he crosses the 40. Rumbles out to the 45-yard line before Tavares Robinson gets him to the ground. Alabama, Andy has been able to run in spurts, but again, not able to sustain anything effectively. Well, you think Brody Crawl coming into the game. Auburn thinks pass. Quick hitter up the middle, Shad Williams, 18 yards and a first down. Williams stays in the game alongside Coyle in the shotgun. Coyle rifles that pass incomplete. Fulgham had it in his hands for a split second, but... Traveris Robinson, good coverage, may have jarred that one loose. Say what, that was pretty good protection by Alabama. Auburn brought five on the blitz, and Alabama did a good job of matching up, and Croyle had time to throw and delivered a good ball to Fulgham, who just couldn't hang on. A couple of drops for Fulgham today. Second and ten. Auburn shows blitz again. Ten in the box right now for Auburn. Now they walk all 11 up to the line. Play clock at three. And timeout or delay a game. It'll be a timeout by a split second. 
Coyle trying to check off at the line when he saw all 11 Tigers stand up there, and he just did get the timeout called. 2.05 to go in the first half. Tigers still in control, 17 to nothing. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSN. Tune in as the Vols head to Nashville to play the Commodores. Three years starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, only on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Highlights of the Alabama game with Coach Fran on Tuesday nights at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 Central on the Dennis Francioni Show, only on CSS. Seventeen nothing our score. Alabama trying to mount a drive before halftime. It's second and 10 from the tied zone, 45. Croyle swings it out to Shawn Williams. Eludes one man and ridden out of bounds at the Auburn 40-yard line. I tell you what, for those that have not seen Shawn Williams this year, he is an exciting guy to watch. He's not the biggest in the world either. Not the fastest, but certainly one of the toughest guys you'll ever see. Uh, he certainly makes Carlos Rogers miss to the sideline. Rogers recovered to make the tackle. Not before Alabama gets to the inside the Auburn 40 yard line. Clock continues to move down to a minute 45 to go in the first half. Royal guns that pass incomplete. He was looking for Clint Johnston on the go route, but he almost threw it to Traveris Robinson. Perhaps a little too hard for Robinson to handle. At the last second, Auburn brought a middle blitz with the linebacker, and I don't think Johnston, the tight end, read it. We saw it happen on Auburn's last drive when the tight end didn't read the blitz. Same thing happened for Alabama there. Watch the throw. This could have, probably should have been an interception for Robinson. Clock stopped with 1.33 to go before intermission. Croyle gives it away to Williams, who goes nowhere. Ran into him as he tried to hand it off. Reggie Torbor there to clog it up and stop him for no gain on the play. Third down and 10. And the clock winding down, a minute 15 and ticking. Well, Auburn's done a good job today, especially guarding against that draw out of the shotgun. Alabama's run it twice for very little yardage. Alabama just one of five on third down. They need 10 yards here to keep this drive going. Coyle unloads for Fulgham, broken up. Roderick could almost pick that one off for Auburn and it's fourth down, Alabama. Still just inside the Auburn 40-yard line with 45 seconds to go before halftime. Alabama's already 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions today. It looks like Dennis Franchoni will go for it again. The Auburn secondary has done a nice job here in the first half. And what will defensive coordinator Gene Chizik call here for Auburn on fourth down? Again, he walks nine up on the line of scrimmage. Bama just does get the play off. Croyle flushed out. Throws on the run. Diving catch made by Shawd Williams, but he's going to be about a half a yard shy of the first down. Auburn will hold on fourth down. Shawd Williams trying to come back to the ball with Croyle running out of the pocket. And then Williams catching the ball and falling down, shy of the first down, and Auburn holds. Came back a step too far that time, did Williams. 
watch Carl run out, and his target was Shad Williams there. A little bit of a low ball, and Williams had to go to the turf to make the catch. So again, the Tigers hold. 33 seconds to go before halftime. See if Tommy Tuberville tries anything or is satisfied with his 17-0 lead at the half. And it looks like that will be the case. Campbell will simply take a knee, but a flag comes in. Does it look like Auburn may have jumped prematurely? Why would you jump when you're going to try gonna and just take a knee? Of all the silly penalties in the world, <laughs> that'll rank right up there. <laughs> You're just trying to snap it, take a knee, and go to the lock locker room. Now that makes a little more sense, but just barely. At least no one jumped. So the five-yard step off. And Auburn will have to snap it again. Now Campbell takes a knee, and that'll do it for the first half. A half dominated by the Auburn Tigers, 17 to nothing, and the Crimson Tide still has not scored against Auburn here in Tuscaloosa. An impressive first half for the visitors. Well, for Auburn, a first half much like last week against Georgia leading at the half. Auburn led by 11 at halftime last week. Dominated the first half of play, only to watch Georgia come back and win it on the last minute touchdown pass. That's what Alabama fans are hoping for now as the Crimson Tide trails 17 to nothing in the Iron Bowl. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the new Chicago Dish Pizza from Pizza Hut. The deepest pizza ever to hit your table. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, finished before your eyes right at your table with chunky marinara sauce and topped off with freshly grated cheese. So deep, you'll need a fork to eat it. The Chicago Dish Pizza, new at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Going down. Top level, chunky marinara. Next three levels, cheese and toppings. Ground floor, golden flaky crust. If you're tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas, let us take you to the next level with the new Chicago dish from Pizza Hut. Level upon level of our most tantalizing ingredients piled so deep, you're going to need a fork. Go deep. Going up. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Ready to start the second half of the Iron Bowl here in 2002. David Crane, Andy Burcham with you. And Auburn impressively in the first half, 17 to nothing. But Andy, Auburn in this situation somewhat last week against Georgia. Auburn led by 11 at the half, really dominated the first half of play. Georgia receiving in the second half, took the opening drive down and scored. Momentum really changed at that point. Low line drive kick from Duvall. Luke down the sideline. Elbowed out of bounds near the 30-yard line. So the Crimson Tide will have decent starting position to begin things here in the second half. We understand Coach Dennis Franchoni spent a little extra time at halftime with his quarterbacks not real pleased with the play of either Tyler Watts or Brody Coyle in the first half. Well, both quarterbacks had open receivers late in that first half and overthrew them. We'll see what Auburn's able to do defensively here, really. Did a good job to stop the option and to take away the draw. Tyler Watts starts the second half for Alabama. Santonio Beard, the lone setback for the Crimson Tide on offense, and he'll get the handoff. A yard or two, that's about it over the right side. Mark Brown, Carlos Rogers combined to make the stop on Beard after the short pickup. Alabama running to the short side of the field. Carlos Rogers did a good job coming up from his quarterback spot to fill it in. Got some help from Mark Brown on the tackle. On second down, play action as Auburn comes with pressure underneath. Collins makes the grab. Slicing across the field right at the 40-yard line where Traveris Robinson 
pops him good, but that'll be good enough for Alabama first down. Tyler Watts rolling out of the pocket, sets and throws, and Collins is open. He throws it a little bit low. Collins does a good job to hang on after getting the pop from Travis Robinson. Nine yards on the gain. First down right at the 40-yard line. And now Greg McLean checks into the ball game at fullback for the Tide in front of Santonio Beer. Nothing fancy. Santonio on the carry for a yard. A similar setup really for Alabama to the Oklahoma game where the Tide did not play very well, especially offensively in the first half. Gave up some points right before halftime, but the third quarter in that ball game was as dominating a performance as you could ever hope to see if you were an Alabama fan. So Tide fans probably thinking back to that trip to Norman as we start the third quarter. Collins breaks into motion, but the give is to Beard. Over the left side, tripped up over on the sideline by Traveris Robinson, or that may have been a big, big gain for Santonio Beard. Again, we see Robinson come up from his right quarterback spot to make the stop for Auburn. Beard got seven, as David mentioned. It could have been much more as he got to the sideline, and it brings up third down and two for the Crimson Tide. Alabama just one of six on third down in the first half. Auburn slightly better at two of five. It'll be third and seven. As it looked like Wesley Britt or Justin Smiley won. Got a quick start. I think it was the quick tackle Wesley Britt who pulled up just a little bit early. Tide needs to reach midfield to keep this drive going. That's the fourth penalty of the day. Committed by Alabama for 35 yards now. Changes things substantially from third and two, now third and seven. And the shotgun look for Watts. Auburn shows blitz. Watts with time, unloads underneath, bobbled and dropped. Triandos Luke with good coverage by Horace Willis. If he makes the grab cleanly initially, he has a chance at the first down, but once the bobble came into play, no chance. Auburn put nine up at the line of scrimmage and then dropped the linebacker back in coverage. Watts finding Luke across the middle. Good play by Willis to break it up. Beard on the punt for Alabama. 39 plus yards on three punts in the first half for the Tide. Roderick Hood awaiting. Good snap, no pressure. Wobbly kick. Roderick Hood reels in at the 25 as flags come flying in. May have a halo violation against the Crimson Tide. 32-yard punt, four yards on the return. Chris James credited with the tackle for Alabama, but the Tigers may pick up some extra yardage here. Indeed, violation of the halo called on Alabama, so that will cost the Tide some yards. I don't know about you, Andy. I don't like the halo rule. If you're not going to make a fair catch, if you don't call for a fair catch, you ought to be fair game. Looks like it's a rule the teams have really had trouble adjusting to this season. So a 10-yard step off takes it out to the 36 yard line so pretty good starting position for the Tigers their first possession of the second half when we come back 11.54 to go in the third Tigers lead it 17 to nothing you ordered the Chicago dish our new deep dish pizza now I warn you this baby is so deep you need a fork sounds good tired of wimpy paper thin pizzas next time go deep with the chicago dish pizza new from pizza hut filled to the brim with layers of cheese overloaded with toppings and topped off with chunky marinara sauce the new chicago dish so deep you'll need a fork maybe even a knife whoa hey don't pick up the phone order your favorite pizza online at pizzahut.com
We got a lot of things to do before we hibernate. I mean, you never know how much wood you're going to need in the winter time. Come home and find a foot and a half of leaves all over the place. This is the land that Troy built, where people work hard, live simply, and get ready for winter with Troy built outdoor power equipment. Like our chipper shredder back that turns leaves and branches into mulch. We take all of the leaves that we have and grind them up and then we put them on the flower beds as protection. And the powerful Troy built log splitter. With 27 tons of pressure, it'll split anything. Call now for a catalog of all our fall and winter machines, including our rugged yet easy to operate snow throwers. They come standard with four cycle Tecumseh engines, so there's no more mixing of gas and oil, plus convenience features like electric start, touch and turn steering, and all wheel drive. Call now and get 0% financing, plus a free guide to getting ready for winter. We got some crazy winters up here, but I'm ready for it. This is the land that Troy built. Call now and join us. After the procedure, you get these free breadsticks. Here are your free cheese sticks. It's a promotion. Here's a dry cleaning. Oh, and don't forget your free cheese sticks. Everyone's giving away free cheese sticks. But only at Pizza Hut can you get the unbelievably huge, extra large, big New Yorker pizza for $9.99 with free cheese sticks or breadsticks. Who's getting grease on these cheese sticks? Sorry about that. The enormous big New Yorker and free cheese sticks or breadsticks at Pizza Hut. Auburn starts things at their own 36-yard line. Jason Campbell in the shotgun. He was 9 out of 13 in the first half. A couple of touchdown passes. He'll deal it off to Trey Smith, who is hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss on the play. Brooks Daniels shooting through to hit him for a fairly decent loss on first down. A couple of yards. Daniels, the rover, comes on the blitz, and Auburn ran right into the teeth of that blitz with Trey Smith, and it's going to be a big loss for Auburn. Actually, they'll give him forward progress, so it's a loss of only two on the play. Smith, 13 carries, 99 yards in the first half. We said Campbell, 9 out of 13, 141 yards passing, and the two big touchdown throws. Play fake for Campbell, all day to throw. Goes underneath, it's deflected, and it is intercepted. Wayne Bacon on the deflection. Comes up with a big turnover by the Alabama defense. 17 straight games now. The Alabama defense has forced a turnover. Anthony Bryant may have been the man that got the hand on it. Well, protection's not the problem. Campbell has all day to throw. He just doesn't have anybody open, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage by Jarrett Johnson, and Bacon makes the pick. First turnover of the ball game. So now we'll see if the Alabama offense can do anything with the turnover. I formation on first down, and Watts on the option pass look. Wide open, Sam Collins has the ball inside the Auburn 30-yard line. Traveris Robinson on the tackle, but a big game for the Alabama offense. Well, the option pass, and it looked like Junior Rosegreen, Auburn's strong safety, bit on the play. He had Collins, and then he didn't have Collins, and Robinson had to come up from his free safety spot to make the play. It's a good call on first down, and Collins was wide open, and Watts hit him in stride. First catch of the day for Sam at the Auburn 29. Two tight ends for the Tide, and the give to Santonio Beard, trying to get outside. Auburn does a nice job of stringing the play out, and Robinson, along with Carlos Rogers, helping out to contain Santonio Beard. From Auburn's linebackers to the secondary, the Tigers have good speed to the corner defensively. Did a good job going to the short side of the field and just stringing out Santonio Beard, who did a good job just to get a yard on the play. They credit him with one yard, but that's about it. Second down and nine. McLean slides into motion as Watts wants to throw again. He'll run it now. Down to the 20-yard line as a late, late flag comes in. May have been a hold or a clip on Greg McLean trying to help his quarterback along. And Car it is a hold. Yeah, it's a hold on Carlos Dansby, Auburn's outside linebacker, who was coming up on the plate to try and get to Tyler Watts, who tried to cut back into the middle of the field and 
Watch number 11. There it is right there. As he held him at the ankles, almost to tackle on Carlos Dansby. And that fine run by Tyler Watts will come back. So the step off will move it back to the 33 yard line since the hold came downfield. Second down now and call it 14 for the tide. Clock rolling, nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Alabama trying desperately to get something going on offense. Two tight ends, and Watts looks to throw again. Now he tucks it, dives forward, gets what he can to the 25-yard line. That'll leave him about six yards shy, but now a very, very late flag comes in on the play. This may be a late hit on Auburn. A face mask. We'll see if it's five or 15 yards. At any rate, it will be close to an Alabama first down, even if it's a five-yard penalty. They'll tack it on to the end of the run by Tyler Watts. Still going to be about a half-yard shy of the first down. And the down goes over again. Spotted right on the 20-yard line. Bama needs the 19 for the first down. So it's now second and one. A long one now as the umpire slides the ball back about a half a yard. Two tight ends set once more for the Crimson Tide. Option, Watts dives for the 20 and can get no farther. Once more, Auburn, Reggie Torbor, busting through to disrupt that play and corral Tyler Watts for no gain. Well, the key for Auburn on the option is the defensive end has to get through and put some pressure on the quarterback and force Tyler Watts either to cut up field or to pitch it. So far on the, on the option, we've seen Tyler keep the ball every single time. Reggie Torbor did a good job there. It's still third down and one now. Brandon Greer split wide to the near side for Alabama. Sean Williams checks into the Bama backfield. Option look again. They'll pitch it to Williams. He has the first down and more. Inside the 10, out of bounds at the seven yard line. It's first and goal, Alabama. Well, the first time we see Tyler Watts pitch it, Reggie Torbor couldn't get to either one, the quarterback or the pitch man. That's a good play by Alabama, and Sean Williams rumbles down to red zone territory for Alabama. First time Alabama has been in the red zone today, and the tide has been pretty good as of late. 16 for the last 16 inside the 20 in scoring points. They need a touchdown here. Give to Santonio Beard and no running room at all as flags come flying in. This may be another face mask on Auburn. Reggie Torbor had the tackle, but he may have had a piece of the grill work as well. Yep, yep. That's exactly what it is, likely to be another incidental face mask, but it will give Alabama another first down. Boy, it's an unnecessary play because Torbor has Beard stood up. That's going to be a loss if Reggie doesn't grab hold of the cage. Had him stood up and had plenty of help. Yes, he did. So half the distance moves it just inside the four-yard line, and it's still first down for Alabama. Clock on the move, seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Full house backfield for the Tide. Dre Fulgham shifts into motion. They give it to Santonio Beard, trying to get to the corner. Now reverses field and will take it down to about the two-yard line. Another fine job by the Auburn defense of really stringing the play out. And Santonio, a nice cutback to get a couple of yards. 
Looked like Junior Rosegreen may be the guy that turns this one up. Number four for Auburn. And also Carlos Rogers coming out and making sure that Beard didn't make it to the corner. Same formation for the Tide. Two tight ends, the full house backfield, and now Fulgham shifts once more. Pitch it to Beard for the corner. Touchdown. And finally, Alabama is on the board against Auburn here in Tuscaloosa. A three-yard touchdown run for Santonio Beard gets Alabama on the board. His 12th rushing touchdown of the season. And here's Kyle Robinson to attempt the extra point. Nick Ridings, the snapper. Kick on the way, and the kick is good. Timeout. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, and Alabama capitalizes on the Auburn turnover. The touchdown run by Santonio Beard makes it 17 to 7, Auburn. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSF. Tune in as the balls head to Nashville to play the Commodores. Three years starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, only on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. highlights of the Alabama game with Coach Fran on Tuesday nights at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 Central on the Dennis Francioni Show, only on CSS. Seventeen to seven, Auburn with the lead, but Alabama on the board and trying to build a little momentum here in the third quarter. Six forty to play, and Alabama able to take advantage fully of the Auburn turnover. Yeah, a week ago Auburn turned the ball over three times early against Georgia and dodged the bullet. They weren't able to do so here in Tuscaloosa. Santonio Beard taking it in the final yard. The Crimson Tide on the board for the first time ever at home against Auburn. Only the fourth time the game has been played here, but that's the first point scored by Alabama. Roderick Hood drifts back two yards deep and will take a knee. Good kickoff by Brian Bostic. Some extracurricular activities. But everybody's friends again, and Auburn will start at the 20-yard line. Nine plays, 46 yards. That scoring drive for Alabama. 424 off the clock, and I believe a two-yard touchdown run for Santonio Beard. Now, can Jason Campbell right. forget about the tip ball that turned into an interception and get the offense back in gear for Auburn? Well, we'll find out. He's done a good job in the last half of the season staying away from the turnover. The first turnover of this ball game leads to points for Alabama. Five wide receivers on first down. McIntyre, the motion man. Flags down as Campbell throws complete to Marcel Willis. Takes it to the 24-yard line, but Alabama, I believe, offside. Yeah, that's a free play, I think, for Auburn. It looked like the right defensive end for Alabama. Antoine Odom jumped. On the near side, there it was Antoine Odom, number two in the SEC in sacks. But he came out of the stance a count too soon. So the Tigers get first down over again, first and five. Sun has set here in Tuscaloosa, the lights taking full effect. Getting a little cooler, but all things considered, not a bad night for late November. Smith takes the handoff, takes a shot from Jarrett Johnson and goes down. Jarrett Johnson nearly decapitated Joseph Adai a week ago in Baton Rouge 
And he got a pretty good lick on Trey Smith there. A host of crimson jerseys bringing down number 22 for Auburn. Actually got a yard at second and four. Second down. Hooper Wallace back in front of Trey Smith in the I formation. Campbell checking off at the line. Play clock at four. Gives it to Smith. Flags are down. Smith still on his feet. Bursts it out near the 40-yard line, but check the marker. Flags down on either side of the field. We'll wait and see who this one's against. Another offside penalty against Alabama. Auburn will obviously decline that on a fine run from Trey Smith. Watch the cutback as he gets through one tackle. Alabama lined up offsides that time. Charles Jones just holding on for dear life on Trey Smith here. It's a good move back, at cutting across the green, and Jones just gets a hold of the jersey. Auburn out to the 40. Tide shifting before the snap defensively. Campbell, the deep drop to throw. Protection, breaks down. Campbell flushed, able to keep his feet. Out of bounds in Alabama territory as a flag, I think, came in very late. Looked like there may have been a hold on the near side trying to spring Campbell. Right in front of the Auburn bench. I bet this one comes back. It is a hold against Alabama. Good job by Jason Campbell to get away from the initial rush. Let's see if we can pick up the hold. It's down at the bottom of the screen here. Hard to tell where it was. Takes away a first down run by Jason Campbell. And penalties right now starting to hurt Auburn on the touchdown drive by Alabama. Auburn got hit with a pair of incidental face masks and only five yards both times. They still hurt the Tigers in both occasions. Step off will take it back to the 36 yard line where it's first and 14 now. Play action, Campbell keeps it himself. Back to the 40 yard line, maybe the 41, so he gets the result or the bulk of that penalty back and it's second and nine. Quarterback draw there on a, in a play action situation, a hand, a fake hand off to Smith. Auburn tries to collapse the left side of the line and Campbell gets five, and it brings up second down and nine. Campbell, a career best 72 yards rushing last week and a touchdown in the game with Georgia. Delay give to Smith, and Alabama not fooled. That'll go for a loss of a couple on the play as Brooks Daniels greeted Trey Smith. Auburn tries to run the draw out of the shotgun, and Trey Smith just has no chance at all. It's a heck of a job on the play. Brooks Daniels coming in and fighting off the block of the tight end, Robert Johnson. And now Auburn third down and 11. Third and 11. Big, big play for both sides right now. Alabama trying to gain some momentum. Campbell checking off at the line with four on the play clock. Just does get it away. Fires, complete, slips a tackle. Willis, deep into Bama territory at the 34, maybe the 33-yard line before Cornelius Wortham can get him to the ground. A big play on third and long for the Tigers. Looked like there was a little bit of confusion on the Alabama defense. They were late getting on the field. Auburn goes to the far side. Watch the move right here, Marcel Willis. Somebody comes out of their shoe, and Willis just right up the chute for a first down. And Late, watch him wrap that ball up, both hands on the ball so someone doesn't bat it away from behind. First down at the Bama, 32. Bama crowds the line, and Campbell will have to spend a timeout with the play clock at one. Alabama put eight up in the box, Campbell running out of time, and probably wisely so calls the timeout. 2.33 to go in the third quarter. 
Auburn tried to an answer an Alabama score with one of their own. 17-7, Tigers. Wednesday night is South Carolina night on CSS. Tune in as the Gamecocks visit Clemson to battle for the interstate dragon rights. Action starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Thursday night is Clemson night on CSS. Tune in as the Tigers and Gamecocks battle for bragging rights in the re-air of the Clemson South Carolina game. Action starts at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Seventeen to seven, our score. Two minutes, thirty-three seconds to go in the third quarter. David Crane, along with Andy Burcham, the Tide and the Tigers. Auburn driving now. First down at the Alabama thirty-two yard line. Campbell, the deep drop, going to the end zone. It is broken up. Well done, Herschel Bolden, that, step for step with a Romashadu. That's a touchdown saving play by Herschel Bolden. A pump fake by Campbell as he goes to the end zone for a Romashadu. He's got a step on Bolden who turns around at the right time. He found out where the ball was. That's a veteran play by Bolden to take away a touchdown for Auburn. Campbell may have underthrown the ball just a bit as well. Back to the eye formation on second and 10. The draw to Smith who tripped and goes down after a short gain, about a yard to the 31. Setting up another third and long, call it nine for the Tigers. Looked like Anthony Bryant kind of fell on Trey Smith who was stumbling as soon as he got the ball. Third down, Tigers need to take it to the Alabama 22 to keep this drive alive. Just converted a big third down a moment ago. Campbell, good protection, fires. It is incomplete, broken up again that time by Wayne Bacon, who made a nice break on that ball and decision time for Tommy Tuberville. Well, Auburn trying to get the ball to Robert Johnson on the play, and we see two good defensive plays back to back by Alabama, closing on the ball there. Auburn still would have been shy of the first down, but the field goal attempt would have been about eight yards closer. As it stands right now, this will be a 48-yarder. Damon Duvall will take it right in the middle of the field. Hit from 41 yards earlier. Length has not been a problem. Keeping it between the uprights has been the problem for Damon this season. Officially a 47-yarder. Plenty of leg, and the kick is no good. So Duvall now just one of four on the year from 40 to 49 yards. And Alabama dodges a bullet there. A hold of the Tigers. And the tide takes over. You just see it across its 30. You see the ball? It was well over the top of the uprights, but he hooked it. And that's been a problem all season long. So here comes the Alabama offense. A minute 38 to go in the third. Tied down by 10. Play action. Watts fires. Complete. Triandos loop. Darts into Auburn territory at the 48-yard line before Roderick Hood gets him down. A couple guys that grew up pretty close to each other. Roderick Hood, Columbus, Georgia, and Triandos Luke just across the river in Phoenix City, Alabama. He drove Roderick Hood eight yards off the, uh, the pass and then made a nice move to get past Hood. And right now, Auburn trying to make sure that Alabama doesn't seize control of the momentum. Three wide receivers to the near side, and Zach Fletcher, the man in motion. Fake the handoff to him. They'll pitch it out to Sean Williams, wrapped up and dropped for a loss. Carlos Dansby, and boy, I tell you what, guys, that's the kind of play that Dansby has been making all season long. 
he took the quarterback and the pitch man on the play and made the stop. And he has the athleticism to do it. 6'5", 221. He runs down Shad Williams. Not too many guys do that. Loss of five, second and 15 now for Alabama. Back at its own, 47. The short roll for Watts, fires that complete to the far side. Zach Fletcher on the grab for Alabama. They'll say his forward progress was stopped before he went out of bounds. Clock continues to tick. Back to the Auburn 44-yard line, and it'll be third down and a long five when Alabama next snaps the ball, which will likely be in the fourth quarter. The final seconds tick away, and that'll do it for the third here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. The Tigers still lead 17-7. Alabama faces a big third down when we come back. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the new Chicago Dish Pizza from Pizza Hut. The deepest pizza ever to hit your table. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, finished before your eyes right at your table with chunky marinara sauce and topped off with freshly grated cheese. So deep, you'll need a fork to eat it. The Chicago Dish Pizza, new at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Final 15 minutes of the Iron Bowl here in 2002. David Crane along with Andy Burcham. Alabama trails it 17-7, facing third and a long five, almost six yards needed for the Crimson Tide to keep this drive going. Need to take it to the Auburn 38 for the first down. Collins breaks into motion. Watts rolls, throws. Collins is open, but he overthrows him. Watts got a little pressure that time and winds up overthrowing Collins, who had gotten behind the Auburn defensive back. Saw that on a couple of occasions in the first half with both Tyler Watts and Brody Croyle, and an Auburn player down in the backfield laying on his back, and Collins was open, came in motion, started up the field, and got behind Roderick Hood, I believe, and was just simply overthrown by Tyler Watts. First play of the fourth quarter. And the Auburn defender's still down, and it looks, at least for the moment, but Alabama is going to go for it on fourth down here. Can't quite make out a number on the injured Tiger down. Free timeout, basically, for Alabama to talk things over. And Tyler Watts is staying out on the field, so it appears as if the Crimson Tide will go for it on fourth down. Jay Ratliff, a defensive end for Auburn. Looks like it may be his left arm or shoulder. See, favors that coming off the field. So it is fourth down, and Alabama appears as if it will go for it. They're all of two on fourth down today. Tied on the year. Now seven out of 15 on fourth down. Wouldn't be surprised Alabama does something similar to the last play. Shotgun for Watts on fourth down. Blitz comes late, swinging out to Sean Williams, trying to turn the corner, and he can't do it. Auburn hems him in on the sideline. Horace Willis able to ride him out of bounds. Don Terry Stottis got there first. Horace Willis came up and filled the gap, and Auburn holds on fourth down again. Tied 0 for 3 now on fourth down, and the Tigers take over at their own 42-yard line. Still very early here in the fourth quarter. From the Auburn perspective right now, it's 
very important, and I know it sounds obvious, no turnovers. Alabama's only points today came off an Auburn interception. Campbell rolls, throws on the run. That pass a little too tall for Robert Johnson, and it's incomplete. Well, we saw Robert Johnson drop a wide open ball in the second quarter. This pass by Campbell was a little bit high, but it looked like Johnson could have caught the ball. Stead through his hands, and Auburn second down and 10. Clock stop with 14 minutes and 37 seconds to go. Here in the final stanza. Delay give to Smith the draw. Trey Smith ducks his head and moves the pile out to about the 45 yard line. Freddie Roach, D'Amico Ryan's also there to help out for the Crimson Tide defense. That sets up a third. And about seven now for the Tigers. Alabama rushed six on the play, and Auburn gets three yards on the draw. Auburn goes to a five-wide set. They've had success with that most of the day. See if Alabama blitzes. They rush only four. Campbell. Hit from behind and sacked. Norton McKay Osher drills him at the 40-yard line. Campbell was hit from the blind side. He might have been better served just to run the football. Watch Losher fight off the tackle of Mark Perry. Comes the long way around, and just as Campbell tries to turn and throw, Losher lowers the boom. Duvall on to punt. A week ago, Damon had a chance to pin Georgia deep several times and didn't do it in the fourth quarter, and that was an integral part of the game. Shawn Williams awaits at his own 15. Wobbly kick by Duvall that bounces and checks up near the 30-yard line where it will be touched down by the Tigers. Officially the 28-yard line, and that's where Alabama We'll take over when we come back. Timeout, 12.57 to play. Auburn still leads it, 17-7 over the Tide. They're grilling again. We're going over. They just had us over last week. Oh, yeah. I can almost taste it. But my hair. Don't worry, honey. They love us. Hold it. We fit the mother load. 12 ounces of delicious T-bone. Shoney's is serving up family favorites at a price you'll love. Classics like our original half a pound and grilled chicken entrees or our 12 ounce T-bone steak. And try one of three tasty toppings for just 99 cents more. Shoney's, we can't wait to have you over. Another look at the punt. Did it touch an Alabama player? Look at Took a funny hop. I think it was about a yard away. Pretty close, though. Checked up for Duvall. And, and, again, his, and his punting woes in the fourth quarter continue. Everybody knows kickers can be kind of a squirrely lot. When things are going good, they're great. And when they turn for them, it can be a definite struggle for those guys. So Alabama will start. Around its own 28-yard line, Duvall on the year, still averaging about 44 yards a kick. But again, as you said, consistency has been his biggest enemy this year. Last week in the fourth quarter, he was punting into a gale force win and had trouble. Told me earlier this week he had trouble with the drop. And as a result, just wasn't hitting the ball flush. I don't think wind is a problem here tonight. But I something just people don't think about, the wind, obviously, when you punt into a wind can be a factor, but can play tricks when you try and drop the pigskin as well. And then when you add to that, he has an unusually high drop anyway. It's not as low as most punters, and he didn't make the adjustments necessary last week. Tide takes over. Just under 13 minutes to play in the ballgame. Bama down by 10. 
Watts on the rollout. Cuts back the other way and will try to get away and can't. Dropped at the 25-yard line for a loss of three on the play. Mark Brown, I believe, the man that got him down for the Tigers. Mark Brown has been Auburn's leading tackler this season, the middle linebacker. He doesn't get as much fanfare as Dontarius Thomas on one side and Carlos Dansby on the other. But he came on the blitz that time and made that sack happen for Auburn. Second down and call it 14 now for Alabama. Antonio Beard, the single setback. Auburn threatens to blitz again. Watts checking off, play clock winding down. Throws to the near side, caught by Triando Sluk. Shakes one man and then tiptoes out of bounds around the 38-yard line. Still a couple yards shy of the first down. We have seen Alabama exploit the wide side of the field in its passing. Tyler Watts coming to this near sideline. And Triandos Luke just driving Carlos Rogers off the ball, coming back. And a 13-yard gain. It brings up third down and about one and a half for Alabama. Uh, needs the 39 to assure it in this situation somewhat last week against Georgia. Auburn led by 11 at the half, really dominated the first half of play. Georgia receiving in the second half, took the opening drive down and scored. Momentum really changed at that point. Low line drive kick from Duvall. Luke down the sideline. Elbowed out of bounds near the 30-yard line. So the Crimson Tide will have decent starting position to begin things here in the second half. We understand Coach Dennis Franchoni spent a little extra time at halftime with his quarterbacks. Not real pleased with the play of either Tyler Watts or Brody Coral in the first half. Well, both quarterbacks had open receivers late in that first half and overthrew them. We'll see what Auburn's able to do defensively here. Really did a good job to stop the option and to take away the draw. Tyler Watts starts the second half for Alabama. Santonio Beard, the lone setback for the Crimson Tide on offense, and he'll get the handoff. A yard or two, that's about it over the right side. Mark Brown, Carlos Rogers combined to make the stop on Beard after the short pickup. Alabama running to the short side of the field. Carlos Rogers did a good job coming up from his quarterback spot to fill it in. Got some help from Mark Brown on the tackle. On second down, play action as Auburn comes with pressure underneath. Collins makes the grab, slicing across the field right at the 40-yard line where Traveris Robinson pops him good, but that'll be good enough for an Alabama first down. Tyler Watts rolling out of the pocket, sets and throws, and Collins is open. He throws it a little bit low. Collins does a good job to hang on after getting the pop from Traveris Robinson. Nine yards on the gain. First down right at the 40-yard line. And now Greg McLean checks into the ball game at fullback for the Tide in front of Santonio Beer. Nothing fancy. Santonio on the carry for a yard. A similar setup really for Alabama to the Oklahoma game where the Tide did not play very well especially offensively in the first half. Gave up some points right before halftime, but the third quarter in that ball game was as dominating a performance as you could ever hope to see if you were an Alabama fan. So Tide fans probably thinking back to that trip to Norman as we start the third quarter. Collins breaks into motion, but the give is to Beard. Over the left side, tripped up. Over on the sideline by Traveris Robinson, or that may have been a big, big game for Santonio Beard. Again, we see Robinson come up from his right quarterback spot to make the stop for Auburn. Beard got seven, as David mentioned. It could have been much more as he got to the sideline, and it brings up third down and two for the Crimson Tide. Alabama just one of six on third down in the first half. Auburn slightly better at two of five. It'll be third and seven. 
As it looked like Wesley Britt or Justin Smiley won. Got a quick start. I think it was the quick tackle Wesley Britt who pulled up just a little bit early. Tide needs to reach midfield to keep this drive going. That's the fourth penalty of the day. Committed by Alabama for 35 yards now. Changes things substantially from third and two, now third and seven. And the shotgun look for Watts. Auburn shows blitz. Watts with time, unloads underneath, bobbled and dropped. Triandos Luke with good coverage by Horace Willis. If he makes the grab cleanly initially, he has a chance at the first down, but once the bobble came into play, no chance. Auburn put nine up at the line of scrimmage and then dropped the linebacker back in coverage. Watts finding Luke across the middle. Good play by Willis to break it up. Bearden on to punt for Alabama. 39 plus yards on three punts in the first half for the Tide. Roderick could awaiting. Good snap, no pressure. Wobbly kick. Roderick could reels in at the 25 as flags come flying in. May have a halo violation against the Crimson Tide. 32-yard punt, four yards on the return. Chris James credited with the tackle for Alabama, but the Tigers may pick up some extra yardage here. Indeed, violation of the halo called on Alabama, so that will cost the Tide some yards. I don't know about you, Andy. I don't like the halo rule if you're not going to make a fair catch. If you don't call for a fair catch, you ought to be fair game. Looks like it's a rule that teams have really had trouble adjusting to this season. So a 10-yard step off takes it out to the 36-yard line. So pretty good starting position for the Tigers. Their first possession of the second half. When we come back, 11.54 to go in the third. Tigers lead it 17 to nothing. You ordered the Chicago dish, our new deep dish pizza? Now, I warn you, this baby is so deep, you need a fork. Sounds good. Tired of wimpy, paper-thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the Chicago dish pizza, new from Pizza Hut. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, and topped off with chunky marinara sauce. The new Chicago dish. So deep, you'll need a fork, maybe even a knife. Whoa. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. We got a lot of things to do before we hibernate. And you never know how much wood you're going to need in the wintertime. Come home and find a foot and a half of leaves all over the place. This is the land that Troy built, where people work hard, live simply, and get ready for winter with Troy built outdoor power equipment. Like our chipper shredder back that turns leaves and branches into mulch. We take all of the leaves that we have and grind them up and then we put them on the flower beds as protection. And the powerful Troy built log splitter. With 27 tons of pressure, it'll split anything. Call now for a catalog of all our fall and winter machines, including our rugged yet easy to operate snow throwers. They come standard with four cycle Tecumseh engines, so there's no more mixing of gas and oil, plus convenience features like electric start, touch and turn steering, and all wheel drive. Call now and get 0% financing, plus a free guide to getting ready for winter. We got some crazy winters up here, but I'm ready for it. This is the land that Troy built. Call now and join us. After the procedure, you get these free breadsticks. Here are your free cheese sticks. It's promotional. Here's your dry cleaning. Oh, and don't forget your free cheese sticks. Everyone's giving away free cheese sticks. But only at Pizza Hut can you get the unbelievably huge, extra large, big New Yorker pizza for $9.99 with free cheese sticks or breadsticks. Who's getting grease on these cheese sticks? Sorry about that. The enormous big New Yorker and free cheese sticks or breadsticks at Pizza Hut. Auburn starts things at their own 36-yard line. Jason Campbell in the shotgun. He was 9 out of 13 in the first half. A couple of touchdown passes. He'll deal it off to Trey Smith, who is hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss on the play. Brooks Daniels shooting through to hit him for a fairly decent loss on first down. A couple of yards 
Daniels, the rover, comes on the blitz, and Auburn ran right into the teeth of that blitz with Trey Smith, and it's going to be a big loss for Auburn. Actually, they'll give him forward progress, so it's a loss of only two on the play. Smith, 13 carries, 99 yards in the first half. We said Campbell, 9 out of 13, 141 yards passing, and the two big touchdown throws. Play fake for Campbell, all day to throw. Goes underneath, it's deflected, and it is intercepted. Wayne Bacon on the deflection, comes up with a big turnover by the Alabama defense. 17 straight games now. The Alabama defense has forced a turnover. Anthony Bryan may have been the man that got the hand on it. Well, protection's not the problem. Campbell has all day to throw. He just doesn't have anybody open, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage by Jarrett Johnson, and Bacon makes the pick. First turnover of the ball game. So now we'll see if the Alabama offense can do anything with the turnover. I formation on first down, and Watts on the option pass look. Wide open, Sam Collins has the ball inside the Auburn 30-yard line. Traveris Robinson on the tackle, but a big game for the Alabama offense. Well, the option pass, and it looked like Junior Rosegreen, Auburn's strong safety, bit on the play. He had Collins, and then he didn't have Collins, and Robinson had to come up from his free safety spot to make the play. It's a good call on first down, and Collins was wide open, and Watts hit him in stride. First catch of the day for Sam at the Auburn 29. Two tight ends for the Tide, and the give to Santonio Beard, trying to get outside. Auburn does a nice job of stringing the play out, and Robinson, along with Carlos Rogers, helping out to contain Santonio Beard. From Auburn's linebackers to the secondary, the Tigers have good speed to the corner defensively. Did a good job going to the short side of the field and just stringing out Santonio Beard, who did a good job just to get a yard on the play. They credit him with one yard, but that's about it. Second down and nine. McLean slides into motion as Watts wants to throw again. He'll run it now. Down to the 20-yard line as a late, late flag comes in. May have been a hold or a clip on Greg McLean trying to help his quarterback along. And it is a hold. Yeah, it's a hold on Carlos Dansby, Auburn's outside linebacker, who was coming up on the plate to try and get to Tyler Watts, who tried to cut back into the middle of the field and Watch number 11, there it is right there. As they held him at the ankles, almost to tackle on Carlos Dansby. And that fine run by Tyler Watts will come back. So the step off will move it back to the 33 yard line since the hold came downfield. Second down now, and call it 14 for the Tide. Clock rolling, nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter, and Alabama trying desperately to get something going on offense. Two tight ends, and Watts looks to throw again. Now he tucks it, dives forward, gets what he can to the 25-yard line. That'll leave him about six yards shy, but now a very, very late flag comes in on the play. This may be a late hit on Auburn. A face mask. We'll see if it's five or 15 yards. At any rate, it will be close to an Alabama first down, even if it's a five-yard penalty. They'll tack it on to the end of the run by Tyler Watts. Still going to be about a half yard shy of the first down. And the down goes over again. Spot it right on the 20 yard line. Bama needs the 19 for the first down. So it's now second and one. A long one now as the umpire slides the ball back about a half yard. 
Two tight ends set once more for the Crimson Tide. Option, Watts dives for the 20 and can get no farther. Once more, Auburn, Reggie Torbor busting through to disrupt that play and corral Tyler Watts for no gain. Well, the key for Auburn on the option is the defensive end has to get through and put some pressure on the quarterback and force Tyler Watts either to cut up field or to pitch it. So far on the, on the option, we've seen Tyler keep the ball every single time. Reggie Torbor did a good job there. It's still third down and one now. Brandon Greer split wide to the near side for Alabama. Sean Williams checks into the Bama backfield. Option look again. They'll pitch it to Williams. He has the first down and more. Inside the 10, out of bounds at the seven-yard line. It's first and goal, Alabama. Now, the first time we see Tyler Watts pitch it, Reggie Torbor couldn't get to either one, the quarterback or the pitch man. That's a good play by Alabama, and Sean Williams rumbles down to red zone territory for Alabama. First time Alabama has been in the red zone today, and the tide has been pretty good as of late. 16 for the last 16 inside the 20 in scoring points. They need a touchdown here. Give to Santonio Beard and no running room at all as flags come flying in. This may be another face mask on Auburn. Reggie Torbor had the tackle, but he may have had a piece of the grill work as well. Yep, yep. That's exactly what it is, likely to be another incidental face mask, but it will give Alabama another first down. Boy, it's an unnecessary play because Torbor has Beard stood up. That's going to be a loss if Reggie doesn't grab hold of the cage. Had him stood up and had plenty of help. Yes, he did. So half the distance moves it just inside the four-yard line, and it's still first down for Alabama. Clock on the move, seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Full house backfield for the Tide. Dre Fulgham shifts into motion. They give it to Santonio Beard, trying to get to the corner, now reverses field, and will take it down to about the two-yard line. Another fine job by the Auburn defense of really stringing the play out, and Santonio a nice cutback to get a couple of yards. Looked like Junior Rosegreen may be the guy that turns this one up, number four for Auburn. And also Carlos Rogers coming out and making sure that Beard didn't make it to the corner. Same formation for the tie. Two tight ends, the full house backfield, and now Fulgham shifts once more. Pitch it to Beard for the corner. Touchdown. And finally, Alabama is on the board against Auburn here in Tuscaloosa. A three-yard touchdown run for Santonio Beard gets Alabama on the board. His 12th rushing touchdown of the season. And here's Kyle Robinson to attempt the extra point. Nick Ridings, the snapper. Kick on the way, and the kick is good. Timeout. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, and Alabama capitalizes on the Auburn turnover. The touchdown run by Santonio Beard makes it 17-7, Auburn. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSS. Tune in as the Vols head to Nashville to play the Commodores. Three years starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, only on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast.
review the highlights of the Alabama game with Coach Fran on Tuesday nights at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 Central on the Dennis Francioni Show, only on CSS. Seventeen to seven, Auburn with the lead, but Alabama on the board and trying to build a little momentum here in the third quarter. Six forty to play, and Alabama able to take advantage fully of the Auburn turnover. Yeah, a week ago Auburn turned the ball over three times early against Georgia and dodged the bullet. They weren't able to do so here in Tuscaloosa. Santonio Beer taking it in the final yard. The Crimson Tide on the board for the first time ever at home against Auburn. Only the fourth time the game has been played here, but that's the first point scored by Alabama. Roderick Hood drifts back two yards deep and will take a knee. Good kickoff by Brian Bostic. Some extracurricular activities. But everybody's friends again, and Auburn will start at the 20-yard line. Nine plays, 46 yards. That scoring drive for Alabama. 424 off the clock, and I believe a two-yard touchdown run for Santonio Beard. Now can Jason Campbell right. forget about the tip ball that turned into an interception and get the offense back in gear for Auburn? Well, we'll find out. He's done a good job in the last half of the season staying away from the turnover. The first turnover of this ball game leads to points for Alabama. Five wide receivers on first down. McIntyre, the motion man. Flags down as Campbell throws complete to Marcel Willis. Takes it to the 24-yard line, but Alabama, I believe, offside. Yeah, that's a free play, I think, for Auburn. It looked like the right defensive end for Alabama. Antoine Odom jumped. On the near side, there was Antoine Odom, number two in the SEC in sacks. But he came out of the stance a count too soon. The Tigers get first down over again, first and five. Sun has set here in Tuscaloosa, the lights taking full effect. Getting a little cooler, but all things considered, not a bad night for late November. Smith takes the handoff, takes a shot from Jarrett Johnson and goes down. Jarrett Johnson nearly decapitated Joseph Adai a week ago in Baton Rouge. And he got a pretty good lick on Trey Smith there. A host of crimson jerseys bringing down number 22 for Auburn. Actually got a yard at second and four. Second down. Cooper Wallace back in front of Trey Smith in the I formation. Campbell checking off at the line. Play clock at four. Gives it to Smith. Flags are down. Smith still on his feet. Bursts it out near the 40-yard line, but check the marker. Flags down on either side of the field. We'll wait and see who this one's against. Another offside penalty against Alabama. Auburn will obviously decline that on a fine run from Trey Smith. Watch the cutback as he gets through one tackle. Alabama lined up offsides that time. Charles Jones just holding on for dear life on Trey Smith here. It's a good move back, at cutting across the green, and Jones just gets a hold of the jersey. Auburn out to the 40. Tide shifting before the snap defensively. Campbell, the deep drop to throw. Protection. Breaks down, Campbell flushed, able to keep his feet out of bounds in Alabama territory as a flag, I think, came in very late. Looked like there may have been a hold on the near side trying to spring Campbell. Right in front of the Auburn bench. I bet this one comes back. It is a hold against Alabama. Good job by Jason Campbell to get away from the initial rush. Let's see if we can pick up the hold. It's down at the bottom of the screen here. Hard to tell where it was. Takes away a first down run by Jason Campbell. 
and penalties right now starting to hurt Auburn on the touchdown drive by Alabama. Auburn got hit with a pair of incidental face masks and only five yards both times. They still hurt the Tigers in both occasions. Step off will take it back to the 36 yard line where it's first and 14 now. Play action, Campbell keeps it himself. Back to the 40 yard line, maybe the 41, so he gets the result or the bulk of that penalty back and it's second and nine. Quarterback draw there on a, in a play action situation, a hand, a fake hand off to Smith. Auburn tries to collapse the left side of the line and Campbell gets five and it brings up second down and nine. Campbell a career best 72 yards rushing last week and a touchdown in the game with Georgia. Delay give to Smith and Alabama not fooled. That'll go for a loss of a couple on the play as Brooks Daniels greeted Trey Smith. Auburn tries to run the draw out of the shotgun and Trey Smith just has no chance at all. It's a heck of a job on the play. Brooks Daniels coming in and fighting off the block of the tight end Robert Johnson. And now Auburn third down at 11. Third and 11. Big, big play for both sides right now. Alabama trying to gain some momentum. Campbell checking off at the line with four on the play clock. Just does get it away. Fires, complete, slips a tackle, Willis. Deep into Bama territory at the 34, maybe the 33-yard line before Cornelius Wortham can get him to the ground. A big play on third and long for the Tigers. Looked like there was a little bit of confusion on the Alabama defense. They were late getting on the field. Auburn goes to the far side. Watch the move right here, Marcel Willis. Somebody comes out of their shoe, and Willis just right up the chute for a first down. And late, watch him wrap that ball up, both hands on the ball so someone doesn't bat it away from behind. First down at the Bama, 32. Bama crowds the line, and Campbell will have to spend a timeout with the play clock at one. Alabama put eight up in the box. Campbell running out of time, and probably wisely so calls the timeout. 2.33 to go in the third quarter. Auburn trying to answer an Alabama score with one of their own, 17-7, Tigers. Wednesday night is South Carolina night on CSS. Tune in as the Gamecocks visit Clemson to battle for the in-state bragging rights. Action starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Thursday night is Clemson night on CSS. Tune in as the Tigers and Gamecocks battle for bragging rights in the re-air of the Clemson South Carolina game. Action starts at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Seventeen to seven, our score. Two minutes, thirty-three seconds to go in the third quarter. David Crane, along with Andy Burcham, the Tide and the Tigers. Auburn driving now. First down at the Alabama thirty-two yard line. Campbell, the deep drop, go into the end zone. It is broken up. Well done, Herschel Bolden, that, step for step with Aroma Shadu. That's a touchdown saving play by Herschel Bolden. A pump fake by Campbell as he goes to the end zone for Aroma Shadu. He's got a step on Bolden who turns around at the right time. He found out where the ball was. That's a veteran play by Bolden to take away a touchdown for Auburn. Campbell may have underthrown the ball just a bit as well. 
Back to the eye formation on second and 10. The draw to Smith who tripped and goes down after a short gain, about a yard to the 31. Setting up another third and long, call it nine for the Tigers. Looked like Anthony Bryant kind of fell on Trey Smith who was stumbling as soon as he got the ball. Third down, Tigers need to take it to the Alabama 22 to keep this drive alive. Just converted a big third down a moment ago. Campbell, good protection, fires. It is incomplete, broken up again that time by Wayne Bacon, who made a nice break on that ball. And decision time for Tommy Tuberville. Well, Auburn trying to get the ball to Robert Johnson on the play. And we see two good defensive plays back to back by Alabama, closing on the ball there. Auburn still would have been shy of the first down. But the field goal attempt would have been about eight yards closer. As it stands right now, this will be a 48-yarder. Damon Duvall will take it right in the middle of the field. Hit from 41 yards earlier. Length has not been a problem. Keeping it between the uprights has been the problem for Damon this season. Officially a 47-yarder. Plenty of leg, and the kick is no good. So Duvall now just one of four on the year from 40 to 49 yards. And Alabama dodges a bullet there, a hold of the Tigers. And the tide takes over. You just see it across its 30. You see the ball, it was well over the top of the uprights, but he hooked it. And that's been a problem all season long. So here comes the Alabama offense. A minute 38 to go in the third. Tied down by 10. Play action, Watts fires, complete. Triandos Luke darts into Auburn territory at the 48-yard line before Roderick Hood gets him down. Couple guys that grew up pretty close to each other, Roderick Hood, Columbus, Georgia, and Triandos Luke just across the river in Phoenix City, Alabama. He drove Roderick Hood eight yards off the, uh, the pass and then made a nice move to get past Hood. And right now, Auburn trying to make sure that Alabama doesn't seize control of the momentum. Three wide receivers to the near side, and Zach Fletcher, the man in motion, fake the handoff to him. They'll pitch it out to Shawn Williams, wrapped up and dropped for a loss. Carlos Dansby, and boy, I tell you what, guys, that's the kind of play that Dansby has been making all season long. He took the quarterback and the pitch man on the play and made the stop. And he has the athleticism to do it. 6'5", 221. He runs down Shad Williams. Not too many guys do that. Loss of five. Second and 15 now for Alabama. Back at its own 47. The short roll for Watts. Fires that complete to the far side. Zach Fletcher. On the grab for Alabama, they'll say his forward progress was stopped before he went out of bounds. Clock continues to tick. Back to the Auburn 44-yard line, and it'll be third down and a long five when Alabama next snaps the ball, which will likely be in the fourth quarter. The final seconds tick away, and that'll do it for the third here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. The Tigers still lead 17 to seven. Alabama faces a big third down when we come back. Tired of wimpy paper thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the new Chicago dish pizza from Pizza Hut. The deepest pizza ever to hit your table. Filled to the brim with layers of cheese, overloaded with toppings, finished before your eyes right at your table with chunky marinara sauce and topped off with freshly grated cheese. So deep, you'll need a fork to eat it. The Chicago dish pizza, new at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Hey, don't pick up the phone. Order your favorite pizza online at PizzaHut.com. Final 15 minutes of the Iron Bowl here in 2002. David Crane along with Andy Burcham. Alabama trails it 17 to seven, facing third and a long five, almost six yards needed for the Crimson Tide to keep this drive going. 
Need to take it to the Auburn 38 for the first down. Collins breaks into motion. Watts rolls, throws. Collins is open, but he overthrows him. Watts got a little pressure that time and winds up overthrowing Collins, who had gotten behind the Auburn defensive back. Saw that on a couple of occasions in the first half with both Tyler Watts and Brody Croyle, and an Auburn player down in the backfield laying on his back, and Collins was open, came in motion, started up the field, and got behind Roderick Hood, I believe, and was just simply overthrown by Tyler Watts. First play of the fourth quarter. And the Auburn defender still down. And it looks, at least for the moment, that Alabama is going to go for it on fourth down here. Can't quite make out a number on the injured Tiger down. And a free timeout, basically, for Alabama to talk things over. And Tyler Watts is staying out on the field, so it appears as if the Crimson Tide will go for it on fourth down. Jay Ratliff, a defensive end for Auburn. Looks like it may be his left arm or shoulder. See, favors that coming off the field. So it is fourth down, and Alabama appears as if it will go for it. They're all of two on fourth down today. Tied on the year. Now seven out of 15 on fourth down. Wouldn't be surprised Alabama does something similar to the last play. Shotgun for Watts on fourth down. Blitz comes late, swinging out to Sean Williams, trying to turn the corner, and he can't do it. Auburn hems him in on the sideline. Horace Willis able to ride him out of bounds. Don Terry Thomas over. got there first. Horace Willis came up and filled the gap, and Auburn holds on fourth down again. Tied 0 for 3 now on fourth down, and the Tigers take over at their own 42-yard line. Still very early here in the fourth quarter. From the Auburn perspective right now, it's very important, and I know it sounds obvious, no turnovers. Alabama's only points today came off an Auburn interception. Campbell rolls, throws on the run. That pass a little too tall for Robert Johnson, and it's incomplete. Well, we saw Robert Johnson drop a wide open ball in the second quarter. This pass by Campbell was a little bit high, but it looked like Johnson could have caught the ball. Stepped through his hands, and Auburn second down and 10. Clock stop with 14 minutes and 37 seconds to go. Here in the final stanza. Delay give to Smith the draw. Trey Smith. Ducks his head and moves the pile out to about the 45-yard line. Freddie Roach, D'Amico Ryan's also there to help out for the Crimson Tide defense. That sets up a third and about seven now for the Tigers. Alabama rushed six on the play, and Auburn gets three yards on the draw. Auburn goes to a five-wide set. They've had success with that most of the day. See if Alabama blitzes. They rush only four. Campbell hit from behind and sacked. Norton McHale Osher drills him at the 40-yard line. Campbell was hit from the blind side. He might have been better served just to run the football. Watch Losher fight off the tackle of Mark Perry, comes the long way around, and just as Campbell tries to turn and throw, Losher lowers the boom. Duvall on the punt. 
a week ago, Damon had a chance to pin Georgia deep several times and didn't do it in the fourth quarter, and that was an integral part of the game. Shawn Williams awaits at his own 15. Wobbly kick by Duvall that bounces and checks up near the 30-yard line where it will be touched down by the Tigers. Officially the 28-yard line, and that's where Alabama will take over when we come back. Timeout, 12.57 to play. Auburn still leads it, 17-7 over the Tide. They're grilling again. We're going over. They just had us over last week. Oh, yeah. I can almost taste it. But my hair. Don't worry, honey. They love us. Hold it. We fit the mother load. 12 ounces of delicious T-bone. Shoney's is serving up family favorites at a price you'll love. Classics like our original half a pound and grilled chicken entrees or our 12-ounce T-bone steak. And try one of three tasty toppings for just 99 cents more. Shoney's, we can't wait to have you over. Another look at the punt. Did it touch an Alabama player? Look, took a funny hop. I think it was about a yard away. Pretty close, though. Checked up for Duvall. And, and, again, his, and his punting woes in the fourth quarter continue. Everybody knows kickers can be kind of a squirrely lot. When things are going good, they're great. And when they turn for them, it can be a definite struggle for those guys. So Alabama will start around its own 28-yard line. Duvall on the year, still averaging about 44 yards a kick. But again, as you said, consistency has been his biggest enemy this year. Last week in the fourth quarter, he was punting into a gale force win and had trouble. Told me earlier this week he had trouble with the drop. And as a result, just wasn't hitting the ball flush. I don't think wind is a problem here tonight. But I something just people don't think about, the wind, obviously, when you punt into a wind, can be a factor, but can play tricks when you try and drop the pigskin as well. And then when you add to that, he has an unusually high drop anyway. It's not as low as most punters, and he didn't make the adjustments necessary last week. Tide takes over. Just under 13 minutes to play in the ball game. Bama down by 10. Watts on the rollout. Cuts back the other way and will try to get away and can't. Dropped at the 25-yard line for a loss of three on the play. Mark Brown, I believe, the man that got him down for the Tigers. Mark Brown has been Auburn's leading tackler this season, the middle linebacker. He doesn't get as much fanfare as Dontarius Thomas on one side and Carlos Dansby on the other. But he came on the blitz that time and made that sack happen for Auburn. Second down and call it 14 now for Alabama. Antonio Beard, the single setback. Auburn threatens to blitz again. Watts checking off, play clock winding down. Throws to the near side, caught by Triando Sloop. Shakes one man and then tiptoes out of bounds around the 38-yard line. Still a couple yards shy of the first down. We have seen Alabama exploit the wide side of the field in its passing. Tyler Watts coming to this near sideline and Triandos Luke just driving Carlos Rogers off the ball, coming back. And a 13-yard gain, it brings up third down and about one and a half for Alabama. Uh, needs the 39 to assure itself of the first down. Beard alongside Watts in the gun. Tyler will throw that pass behind Dre Fulgham and incomplete. Trying to get the ball to Fulgham, Carlos Dansby in coverage for the Tigers. And now a decision for Dennis Franchoni. He's gone for it three times on fourth down and hasn't made it. He has fourth down and two here. If Alabama doesn't make it, they give the ball to Auburn in good field position, and they'll take some time to think about it. Crimson Tide will spend its first time out of the second half to talk over 
this fourth down and two play from its own 37 yard line. We'll see what Dennis Franchoni comes up with when we come back. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> CSS is your source for college basketball, bringing you more than 200 live games from around the region. Tuesday night watches Georgia State visit Auburn to take on the Tigers at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. And stay tuned as Virginia plays Liberty. Don't miss college basketball on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Alabama's 0 3 on fourth downs already today. Fourth and two at its own 37. And the Tide will go for it. Option, Watts keeps it. Very, very I close. I think he got a great spot. Tom. I think he got a great spot and got the first down. Forward progress before he was really popped and driven back. But it will be good for the first down. Another look. Watch where the hit takes place. Right there, and now look where the spot is. Wow. The spot's a good a half yard forward. Wow. That's a terrible call. So a break for the Tide. See if Alabama can capitalize. Clock running, 11 and a half minutes to go. McLean in front of Beard in the I formation. Watts will throw if he could find someone looking for Collins, but overthrows him. Contact, but the ball not catchable, I don't believe. That's what the officials are saying. Threw into double coverage. Robinson and Rogers dropping back for Auburn. Tyler given good time to throw the ball and tries to throw it right up the middle of the field to Collins. There's no way Sam comes up with that ball. Clock stop with 11.18 to play. And a second and 10. Watts pumps, now tucks it as flags fly. And then Tyler ducks his head. That's gonna be a hole back in the backfield and it may go against San Antonio Beard. Auburn brought the blitz. And Alabama, it appeared, did a pretty good job to pick it up. And then as Watts started to tuck it and run, the flag came out. And Auburn, obviously, will take this penalty. Flag thrown by the umpire. Ten-yard step off will make it second and 20. Back at the 30-yard line. Tide's got to get to midfield to sustain this drive. And Brody. Dennis Franchoni, a quick substitution. Brody Coyle sprints onto the field. Obvious passing situation now with second and very long. Play clock at five. And just before the clock hit zero, Coyle spins around and uses Alabama's second timeout. This is the second time that Auburn thought Alabama should have been called for delay of game and got a last second timeout call. A reprieve before the clock hit zero. So timeout, 10.41 to play in the Iron Bowl. Back to Tuscaloosa in just a moment. In competition, injuries happen. It's part of the game. 
And to get back your level of performance takes a lot of hard work, discipline, and the best health care. Health South is the nation's leading provider of outpatient diagnostic, surgery, and rehabilitation services. So we can help you get back fast to the action, the competition, and the glory. We know your body. We understand your spirit. We get you back. If you have debt and are tired of getting calls and letters from bill collectors, we can help. Debt Free is one of the nation's largest nonprofit debt consolidation services. Tim and I kind of got ourselves into a little bit of debt, and we've been wanting to retire by the time we were 50. We woke up one morning and we realized that uh, early retirement was just not an option and that we needed some serious professional help. By calling Debt Free, you can be on your way to financial freedom in as little as 15 minutes because we have relationships with over 50,000 creditors. We will work with these creditors to lower or even eliminate your interest rate and consolidate your debt into one low, comfortable monthly payment. We used to pay a couple thousand dollars a month in bills. And that was due to the high interest rates, and now we're saving $400 to $700 a month, and that's thanks to Debt Free. Gather your most recent bills and credit card statements and call the number on your screen. And leave the rest to us. It's just that simple. Debt Free is more than just our name. It's our commitment to you. After the timeout, Crimson Tide facing second down and 20. Brody Coyle, the deep drop, hit. And now we'll run it. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line, so he gets the holding penalty back and sets up a third down and 10 manageable in comparison to third and 20. When you look at Alabama, you don't think of Croyle as the running quarterback, but he did a good job to avoid Reggie Torbor coming from his back. Steps up and then just trying to find a man, finally decides, I'm gonna get to the sideline and get 10 and that's it. 84,818, the official paid attendance. That's the second largest crowd in Bryant-Denny Stadium history. Another big third down facing Alabama. They need 11, actually, as the ball spotted at the tied 39. Auburn shows blitz. Here they come. Croyle will just throw that one up for grabs, looking for Fulgham, who can't make the catch. Well, that's a heck of a play by Brody Croyle, but Fulgham just couldn't quite get to the football. Tell you what, David, I thought when he let it loose, he was just throwing it out of bounds. And Auburn is fortunate that Fulgham didn't come out, but come down with the ball. Pretty good coverage by Horace Willis. So fourth and 11 now, and Dennis Franchoni will not go for it again. Lane Bearden will punt, as you see. Dre Fulgham couldn't quite get back to the football. Roderick Hood stands at his own 20-yard line. Pretty good punt by Bearden. Sends him back near the 10. Trying to turn the corner, gets a heck of a block. Finally ridden out of bounds around the 28-yard line. Horace Willis delivered a blow on Wayne Bacon. Watch it right. That we don't get to see it on that one. Bacon trying to get to the corner. May we see it in the wide shot here. Watch Hood go to the side, and Bacon get drilled. And a good, good block by Willis as he got in front of Bacon and laid him out. What a punt by Lane Bearden, but a nice return by Roderick Hood. Tell you what, that really is amazing what he has done with a torn ACL. He's a pretty tough young man. Yeah. Timeout, 10.09 to play. Still a 10-point lead for the Tigers. They're grilling again. We're going over. They just had us over last week. Oh, yeah. I can almost taste it. But my hair. Don't worry, honey. They love us. Hold it. We've hit the mother load. 12 ounces of delicious T-bone. Shoney's is serving up family favorites at a price you'll love. Classics like our original half a pound and grilled chicken entrees or our 12-ounce T-bone steak. And try one of three tasty toppings for just 99 cents more. Shoney's, we can't wait to have you over.
reason to shop at home for quality products and honest values. Tigers take over at their own 27-yard line. Flags and whistles sound as the Tigers, I believe, jump. In fact, Garvin was trying to go on a quick count and it wasn't quick enough. Danny Lindsay may have been the guy that got the head start. Lindsay is extraordinarily quick off the ball. That time, a <laughs> little too quick, apparently. <laughs> First and 15 now for Auburn. Toss it back to Trey Smith. The Alabama strings it out. Cornelius Wortham gets credit for the stop. Jarrett Johnson in the neighborhood as well. And a Tiger slow in getting up. Marcus McNeil back to his feet, but limping to the Auburn huddle. True freshman at six. Pulls out a uniform. Second down and 15. No gain on the play for Smith. Five wide receivers for the Tigers and the quarterback draw. Campbell tiptoeing his way through traffic and lunges forward very close to the first down. But a flag, I believe, is down across the way. We'll see if this play stands. It does, and the Tigers will get 15 more. There was activity 10 yards away from the play at the top of the screen. We'll wait and see if we can see it happening as Campbell just runs the quarterback draw. And there, were, there was an Auburn blocker and an Alabama defender that got tangled up at the end of the play eight, nine yards away from the play towards the Alabama bench. And that's a big break for Auburn. It was second down and 15. Campbell almost got it all on the draw and then tack on another 15 yards with the penalty. All the way to the Alabama 48-yard line now. Long count by Campbell. Trying to milk as much of the clock as he can. Deals it away to Smith, who is hit for a loss on the play. Dropped behind the line by Kendall Moorhead for a loss of a couple. Kendall Moorhead and Antonio Bryant. And there was nothing there on the left side of the offensive line for Trey Smith, who loses two on the play. A week ago against Georgia, as you see Bryant and Moorhead combined, a week ago against Georgia, when Auburn was stopped running the football, is when Georgia took that game over. So it's imperative for the Tigers to continue to run the football as much as it can and take time off the clock. Taking down toward the eight minute mark of the fourth quarter. But whistles and flags. It's and gonna Auburn be a delay of game against Auburn. Milked it a little too long. Yep. Second down and 17 coming up for Auburn. Well. It was close to delay of game as well. So a five-yard step off back inside the Tigers' 45. They wind the clock, and we're under eight minutes now. Well, Auburn doing at least one thing it wanted. That's keeping the clock moving. Campbell deals it away to Smith, finds a little crack up the middle, back to midfield. Smith gets five yards for Auburn. That'll set up a third down and 12 as the Tigers need to get it to the Alabama 38-yard line. Clock will be down to around seven minutes by the time this ball is snapped. Would Auburn run a quarterback draw to the shotgun again? Third and 12 here, it was second and 15 when they ran it last.
blitz comes. Campbell in trouble. Gets out of trouble. Will not have the first down, but he does pick up about six yards on the play. Jared Johnson on the stop for the Crimson Tide, and it's fourth down for Auburn. Yeah, now Auburn has an opportunity as Campbell is slow to get up. Game clock at six minutes and 40 seconds. Fourth down, and Auburn's not showing punt yet. Auburn may run the clock all the way down and use one of its timeouts here before it puts the punt unit back on the field here. Alabama defense. I think that's what Auburn's going to do. And now timeout taken by the Tigers. It's Auburn's first of the second half. Well, excuse me, Auburn's second of the second half. Stops the clock with six minutes and 17 seconds to go. Will Tommy Tuberville roll the dice and go for it here? Try and pin Alabama deep. We'll find out when we come back. Now, Micro Lubrication takes your car to the max with C-Max. When you add C-Max Micro Lubrication to your engine, to your transmission, and to your gas tank, Z-Max Micro Lubricating Linkite Molecules actually soak into metal, super lubricating vital working parts. Maximize your savings, maximize your protection, and maximize your performance. In fact, Z-Max works so well, we'll guarantee a boost in gas mileage or you'll get a $100 U.S. savings bond. It's no wonder we say, Z-Max pays you to use it. Here's an engine before Z-Max. Just look at all the carbon buildup. Here's that same engine after being treated with Z-Max. The carbon's gone. Z-Max Linkite Micro Lubricating Technology protects and disperses carbon so well, it's been approved by the Federal Aviation Administration for use in aircraft as Avblend. This same micro lubricating technology is now in Z-Max to protect your car. The entire Z-Max power system is just $39.95. You'll also get our 150,000 mile warranty protection. If anything happens to any part of your car treated with Z-Max, we'll pick up the bill up to a full 150,000 original miles. Plus, you'll get our 24-hour roadside assistance package at no additional charge. And when you order right now, you'll also get Z-Max Small Engine Formula, a $14.95 value, absolutely free. Why not put Z-Max to the test in your car? You'll love your car's new power and performance, reduced engine wear, and get an increase in gas mileage guaranteed by a $100 U.S. savings bond. Z-Max pays you to use it. Have your credit card ready to order now. During this special TV offer, you'll also get our 150,000-mile no-nonsense warranty and the 24-hour roadside assistance package at no additional charge. As an added bonus, you'll get the Z-Max small engine formula of $14.95 value free with your order. With Z-Max, you will get a boost in gas mileage or we'll send you a $100 U.S. savings bond. Call and order right now. Also available at Advance, AutoZone, Pep Boys, Checker, Shucks, Craig, and O'Reilly's and better auto parts stores everywhere. After the procedure, you get these free breadsticks. Here are your free cheese sticks. It's a promotional. Here's your dry cleaning. Oh, and don't forget your free cheese sticks. Everyone's giving away free cheese sticks. But only at Pizza Hut can you get the unbelievably huge, extra-large, big New Yorker pizza for $9.99 with free cheese sticks or breadsticks. Who's getting grease on these cheese sticks? Sorry about that. The enormous big New Yorker and free cheese sticks or breadsticks at Pizza Hut. You're watching CSS. Your source for sports in the Southeast. Tigers sprint out onto the field as it's fourth down and five. Duvall in punt formation. We'll try and pin Alabama deep. He hits that one a mile high. Shaw Williams gets away from it, and it's just into the end zone. He hit that one almost perfectly, but 43 yards, about a yard too much and Alabama will start at its 20 just over six minutes to play in the ball game and the tie down by 10 17 to 7 both teams now with one timeout remaining Brody Coyle leads the Alabama offense out tied a long way to go and time has become a major factor
Rashad Williams alongside Croyle in the Bama backfield. Pressure comes. Croyle dumps it off to Williams. He's got some running room momentarily, but what a play by Travis Williams or Dontarius Thomas. Dontarius Don Thomas. Darius Thomas. DT, and he was the only man there for Auburn against the screen. That's a marvelous play by number 54. Pressure out of the pocket. Spencer Johnson flushes him out. Watch. Shot runs past his blocker, doesn't he? Could have been a big gain. Instead, only five yards. Underneath the Williams. Close to the first down. As DeMarco McNeil credited with the tackle. And it's third and inches for the Crimson Tide. Bama going without the huddle. Coyle, plenty of time, now out of time. Sack, fumbled the football, but Alabama able to fall on it. Alabama needed inches to get a first down, and Coyle wasn't able to deliver the ball. So it's now fourth down and seven for the Tide. And the Crimson Tide will go for it. 440 clock rolling. Auburn blitzes. Blitz comes. Bama picks it up. Catch. Holds him. Into Auburn territory at the 37 yard line. Roderick Hood tracked him down. What a play by Brody Coyle. Out of desperation. Tell you what, you don't see the jump pass much anymore. You take this back in the 60s and the 50s. Watch, the blitz is coming, and he throws it off his back foot, and Fulgen makes a great catch, and then gets away from Carlos Rogers. So the Tide gets a big play. Down to the Auburn 37. Blitz comes again. Coyle can't elude at that time. Mark Brown plants him back at the 46. Well, Auburn's done a good job all night long putting pressure on the Alabama quarterbacks, whether it's Tyler Watts or Brody Croyle. Auburn knowing that Alabama likely to pass, and Brown comes on the blitz and untouched. The back did not pick up Mark Brown. Second down and call it 20 for Alabama. More pressure. Coyle eludes it this time. Throws on the run, looking for Fletcher. Batted and incomplete. Horace Willis back there along with Junior Rosegreen for Auburn. Coyle shows the arm. Remember the touchdown pass he threw at Arkansas that went about 65 yards in the air? He threw that across his body, running to the sideline and still got it to the end zone and actually overthrew everyone. The kid's got a cannon. But more importantly, it's still third and 20 for Alabama. That sack on first down by Brown is a huge play right now for Auburn. Bama's got to take it to the Auburn 26-yard line for a first down. Coyle rifles that pass, low and incomplete, looking for Triando's Luke. Now that time Brody had time to throw the ball and he just delivered it low to Luke. And what the sack did by Brown is it takes Alabama out of field goal range right now. So they've got to go for it on fourth down. Be the fifth time Alabama has gone for it on fourth down today. And right now, this could be the ball game for Alabama if they don't make it. 3.20 to go. And fourth and 20. Auburn brings the blitz off the top corner. Coyle looking for Collins. It's intercepted. Underthrown just a little bit. And Carlos Rogers makes the play for the Tigers at the, Alabama, or rather the Auburn 12-yard line. A week ago, Auburn did not get an interception on the last drive. Dontarius Thomas came close and couldn't come up with the ball. It may have been better, sir, for Carlos Rogers to knock the ball down, but I think he was just making sure that that ball doesn't get behind him. 
Right now, the clock on Auburn's side with 3.12 to go. And just one timeout remaining for Alabama. And Tide defense will need to get a turnover right back, if at all possible. And Auburn will go to work on that clock. Give it to Smith. Two hands on the football as Smith picks up a yard. Now that's the most important thing for Trey Smith now. It's even as much or more important than the yardage that he gains is just holding on to the football. Under three minutes now. And a 10-point lead for the Tigers. They have not scored in the second half. But the defense has gotten the job done for Auburn today. Giving up spurts by the Alabama offense, but that's about it. Smith keeps the legs going, pushes it out around the 18-yard line. And Alabama will spend its final timeout stopping the clock with 2.22 to play. And Auburn looking at a third down and four when we come back. 17 to seven, the Tigers leading the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. CSS is your source for college basketball bringing you more than 200 live basketball games from around the region. Saturday watches Appalachian State play South Carolina at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Central. Then stay tuned for the Tennessee State at Iowa game. Don't miss college basketball on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Violence doesn't solve problems. Violence hurts people. Be alert. If you know someone may become violent, help them. How? Tell someone. Tell your parent. Tell your teacher. Tell your Boys and Girls Club director. You can help prevent violence. Help yourself. Help your friends. Be alert. Tell someone. It's up to you. You know, we sing for millions of girls. But helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply, cause you're the X and I'm the Y. I'm the Q one, you know what I'm saying? So, have you ever been backstage before? Okay, guys, it's an abacus. It's an old school calculator. One, two, three, four. Like the circle and the square. Our geometry is a perfect pair. Now, why should kids know about gravity? Well, gravity holds them down. I once was one, but now we're two. Uh, I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> Third down, Auburn. They need four yards. Alabama out of timeouts. Got to think Auburn will keep it on the ground here. Campbell checking off. Play clock still, six seconds. Hands it to Smith. He is stopped shy of the first down. And a flag and a goes down, and that will stop the clock. 216 with the clock stop momentarily, likely a hold. Yeah. Likely a hold against Auburn, and will, and I guess Alabama would decline it just to get the ball back. Actually, a crackback block, I think, called on the Tigers. Would be our first chop block of the season. Steve Landis misspoke. <laughs> he said third down again, and... I think Auburn would have taken that third down, too. I was going to say, unless that penalty carries with it loss of down and a touchdown for Alabama, the Tide will turn it down. And now Auburn will huddle up on the sideline. Let the clock tick down yeah. all the way and either take the delay or spend the final timeout. I think they're going to get the timeout here. See, Lorenzo Diamond called the timeout with one on the play clock. 
minute 53 to go here at Brian Denny Stadium. Alabama will get the ball back, but dire straits for the Crimson Tide. 17 to seven lead for Auburn. Both teams out of timeouts. You need a big return right here for Alabama, or better yet, a blocked kick for the Tide. And, and Auburn for this year. And Auburn asking Damon Duvall to boom one. The visiting team has won the last three ball games in this series, reversing the trend after the home team had won 10 straight in the Iron Bowl. Just when you thought you had it figured yeah. out. <laughs> well, I mean, a, a year ago, Auburn fans were very confident with Alabama coming to town. And San Antonio Beard ran for 199 yards. And I think Alabama fans were confident with Auburn coming to town this year. I would say so. This one's not over, however. The LSU-Kentucky game will make us always say this game's not over. 20th anniversary of the play between Cal and Stanford. Mm -hmm. Just when you think there's never hope, something bizarre comes your way. It reminds you to play until you see zeros on the clock. Most important guy on the field right now for Auburn is likely Michael Lindsay. He's the snapper on this punt. Alabama will likely load up and come after the punt by Duvall. His only job is to get it away, which he does. Low wobbly kick, Williams up near midfield. Brought down inside the 40 yard line. So Duvall got the punt away. Not a great kick in Alabama. Not dead yet, but needs a big play in a hurry. Starting at the Auburn 39 with a minute 44 to go. And again, out of timeouts. Two scores that Alabama needs. They need at least a touchdown and a field goal here. Brody Coyle stays in there at quarterback for the Tide. The Auburn defense has harassed the Alabama quarterbacks all day long. Auburn will rush four. And this play will not count. And the Tide jumped, I believe. About as out of sync as the Alabama offense has been really in about two years. Well, Auburn has done so far what it was hoping to do defensively, and that's take the run away from Alabama and make the Crimson Tide throw it. So first and 15. Back at the 44-yard line now. Coyle steps up. Now steps back. Guns it deep. Johnston makes a dive for it, but can't come up with it. That would have been another all-timer. So as Rody Coyle stopped exactly on the hash marker where the line of scrimmage was. Right. Another inch or two, and he would have been over the line, but <laughs> very nearly pulled some magic out. And then almost ran right into Brett Eddins. And then almost threw a touchdown pass. <laughs> Amazing. Instead, it's second and 15. Coyle swings it out to Sean Williams, see if he can create something. He'll scamper out of bounds at the 41-yard line. That kills the clock, brings up third down. Yeah, he got four yards, but most importantly for Alabama, gets out of bounds. And that was just a foot race to the sideline between Sean Williams and Dontarius Thomas that Sean won. Third and 11 now for Alabama. A minute 24 to play. Needing two scores in the final. 84 seconds. Croyle zips that one to Johnson, who makes the catch, but he's shy of the first down 
by about six yards or so. So it'll be fourth down yet again, and the clock continues to tick down toward a minute. Got to take it to the 29 for the first down. This is your ball game. Coyle rifles that one, tipped, incomplete. Looking for Triando Sluke. The Tigers break it up, and Auburn will have to milk just 52 seconds off the clock to pick up its eighth win of the season and keep alive, for the time being, hopes of an SEC Western Division Championship. Auburn must hope for an Ole Miss win tonight against LSU, and then an LSU win next week against Arkansas to make it to the SEC championship game. But stranger things have happened in the Western Division of the Southeastern Conference. Meanwhile, Georgia sits back, has the week off, and awaits the mess to sort itself out in the Western Division. Harper will take a delay before it snaps the ball again. So one streak, at least, for Alabama, looking for the bright spot. <laughs> one streak, the scoreless streak, comes to an end. Bama gets on the board against Auburn, but will fall to 0-4 all time here in Tuscaloosa against the Tigers. And Auburn may have to snap the ball one more time, maybe, depending on when the play clock is started. But Auburn's going to come to Tuscaloosa and remain unbeaten. And for the fourth year in a row, the visiting team will walk away the winner. Campbell takes a knee, and the ball game is over. The Auburn Tigers, a 10-point underdog, come into Tuscaloosa and win by 10, 17 to seven. Impressive, Auburn does it without its starting tailback, without its starting fullback. And the Tigers are victorious in Tuscaloosa. 84th thousand eight hundred eighteen. Watch. Dennis Franchotti and Tommy Tuberville meet at midfield. Tommy Tupperville picking up his second win in his career against Alabama, the first coming here two years ago. A 9-0 win that day, 17-7 as Auburn did all it needed to do offensively in the first half. Well, they did. They got two touchdown passes to Robert Johnson, who doubled his touchdown output in one game in this one, and a field goal by Damon Duvall and then giving up the one touchdown in the second half, and then the defense really clamped down. And a very, very good job of coaching by Gene Chiswick and that defensive staff, and did enough offensively, and uh, did a good job to take away the Alabama run. And then when Alabama was forced to pass, put pressure on the quarterback throughout the entire second half of play. Constant pressure on both Tyler Watts and Brody Kroll, and that really, I think, is the story of the ball game. Alabama. Not able to run it effectively, consistently all day. And thanks to that Auburn pressure, the quarterbacks never seemed to really get into a rhythm of any kind. No, they didn't. And Auburn, at times, was varying at bringing the blitz. We saw Mark Brown with the big quarterback sack on Alabama's next-to-last offensive drive. And then, just with the front four, put the pressure on. It's really an incredible win for Auburn. And the Tigers, again, keep their slim SEC Western Division Championship hopes alive. Tigers now in limbo somewhat. Their regular season is over. They sit back and watch to see what happens with LSU and Arkansas. They finish up eight and four on the year, five and three in the SEC. One more game remaining for Alabama. The Tide nine and three, 
six and two wrapping up its SEC schedule. It's off to Hawaii to wrap up the regular season next week for the Crimson Tide. 17 to seven, the final here today as Auburn gets the win over Alabama. Andy Burcham, enjoyed it, my friend. Pleasure to work with you, Dave. Good to see you. We'll see you in basketball season. That's right. For Andy Burcham, I'm David Crane. Thanks for being with us. So long, everyone. College football on CSS has been brought to you by Shoney's. We can't wait to have you over. And by Liberty National Life. Homegrown, hometown service for life insurance. What is the most influential time in a child's life? Age six, eight, 12. Actually, it's between three and eight every afternoon. That's the time a kid is most likely to get into trouble.